Hello, everybody. Welcome back wow. to Tabletop Notch. We are thrilled to be back this week. Oh, sure. We said yeah. temporary goodbye to uh, Graven El Vigo and a return hey. to Erland. Hey. Hi. Hey. Maybe um, Erland. Maybe a new character. Oh my god. That's yeah. true. With Stop. how you roll. Could it, it was close. <laughs> Actually, it was. We had we uh, sort of left off on a little bit of a mid cliffhanger, but also a split party as Ravi and Safira oh walked their way through the ruins. Listen, what was I gonna do? Leave uh, them alone? I gotta go. Leave them alone? <laughs> we both know what you're doing. We both know what you're doing. We both know what you had that yes. moment on the elevator. Oh, huh? We're in love now. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, and uh, Graven falling gently thanks to the use of the feather fell. Feather fell. Yeah, fell. that's right. No thanks to Quiznos. Yes. Well, just gonna not a lot of thanks. We'll love it past you. <laughs> you guys are falling slow. <laughs> We're on top of it. Yeah, does it have to be a willing creature? I don't even think it does, which is hilarious. No, it doesn't. It's, it's a very funny use of Featherfall. You can Featherfall something. I did. Again. Well, you Featherfall the, the, the giant. The giant. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you did. Well, I mean also just if you were falling really fast and you were like, I would like to fall faster than you, you can oh. just unwillingly <laughs> Featherfall. That'd be an interesting take. Yeah, it would be. I need to get away. Um, so that's where we're going to be picking up. But of course, as always, we have a little bit of housekeeping to take care of. Where shall we begin? What? You? Oh, no. Wow. I no, think until he gets no. back to the old chair. No. Yeah. What? Chair? Oh, These chair-based. rolls are chair-based? I'm, I'm doing Discord yeah. today. The rolls are chair-based? Oh, I didn't <laughs> know Discord. that. <laughs> it's either that or Discord. What do you want? Oh, OK. We have social media. <laughs> and in fact, all of them. We are on the Twitter, on the TikTok, on the Instagram, on the YouTube machine, and we are also a podcast. So if you miss this lovely episode, then we will be re-airing it in podcast form on Anchor and Spotify on Tuesday morning. And we also Apple re Podcast. And Apple Podcasts. And the shade. And Can you not? Ooh. Can you not? The, 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 she did that to me every time gaming. I forgot Apple for like gaming. the first four months of this. <laughs> Who listens to Apple Podcasts? That's I do. True. We, I guess actually I do too. <laughs> so <laughs> that's where I listen. But we also have a rear that is video form where you can see our lovely faces on YouTube on Thursdays at nope. 5 Sorry. I'm never gonna get it right. It's Friday. It's Friday. No, I just say we have a Discord. I at some point, <laughs> at some point, I'm gonna get it right, but probably not. Casually. <laughs> so, so what? So what's Fridays real? at 5 p.m. Fridays at 5 p.m. We do a re-air every. We're gonna Friday switch at 5 it to Thursday so I get it right. <laughs> On we're not. We're never gonna. We would never switch to Thursdays ever, ever. Okay. <laughs> Can we move on to Discord? Friday's at 5 p.m. We do a re uh, We also, uh, seamless transition, have a Discord. Oh. Uh, the link for Discord is appearing right now in chat. Oh, God. Oh, no. Yeah. And I'm on it, guys. I've been warming up for a month. You're not even halfway through this plug. We, uh, there's a lot of great channels. If you're new to the show, it's a great way to catch up. We have a wonderful community that can get you on the same page. We also, one all of our favorites. Really genuine. Huh? That all seemed very genuine. I know. I was, <laughs> Uh, it was. It's yeah. a wonderful community. Um, that was genuine. Why did you say that like a douche? Okay. Because I'm wearing this hat. Um, Our very we also have a channel that has a great uh, homebrew section where people exchange yes. their own homebrew ideas, and it's super fun to see all of that. And the fan art's super fun. Fan we got a Kamini cool. fan art. We don't think we have any Ravi fan art yet. Yeah. Your there brother has fan challenge, art. Challenge, though. Yeah. Brother, he gets fan art. Sick. Always, <laughs> older <laughs> brother always. <laughs> Robbie. <laughs> Speaking of homebrew as well, yeah. very I we teased this last week, I believe. Oh, yeah. But coming on the uh, Patreon, which is another thing we can mention, join the Patreon, um, is a bunch of homebrew content, including now that uh, Kiimi and Ravi will be sadly departing from our stage, there's gonna be a little backstory dump on both of them. Oh. We're gonna post um, the homebrewery, homebrewery formatted of their sort of lead into the episodes and the campaign. So if you are dying for a little more backstory on uh, Kimi and Ravi, it's there. Ooh, you can read up. I um, am. I can wait to read it. Yeah, little lore <laughs> corner. So we can copy and paste that right into the fandom. So Erlen subscribed to Patreon while he was gone, and he has been reading their backstories. Yeah. This whole time. yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah. Wants to get all the Berlin wants to pay us three bucks a month. <laughs> um, and on the top tier of the Patreon, if you do that, uh, you get a discount to our merchandise. It's yes. all very, very lovely. We're going to be having new this. stuff coming in around the fall period of time. Oh, so I said it just so. seems like we passed around this shirt because I think Anthony was wearing it. Yeah, I know. Haircut that haircut haircut so again. next week, maybe uh, Billy yeah, yeah. will have It'll be me. Steal that role. Um, also, we've got a new microphone set up this yes. evening. It's our first time really testing through with it, so I'm going to try my best to keep yeah. an eye on the chat. If something ever sounds off, it really shouldn't. We actually. Hey, what's up? Yeah. <laughs> so, st- so scary. Sing us. Oh, to, try to make sure the mics are nice and close, ASMR. so we hope the audio should not be. We should be seamless. <laughs> <I'm too>. But <laughs> if there's any hiccups, uh, we'll, we'll try and correct those as we go. As, as and, like always, Twitch is throwing me for a loop and changing their entire interface oh on mobile, goodness. so I have to scroll through the chat to find all of the subs oh, and the bits, so I'm going to do my best to go really... Okay. And right before you do that, oh, yeah, I'm, oh. worth mentioning, it's September. Oh, yeah? Oh. Do 30% discounts on subscriptions. Ooh. Think, so, <laughs> September. Well, September. <laughs> I don't know if they have a tagline or something, but... <laughs> yeah, they don't. They need a tagline. Oh, September. Yeah. Well, the first person to take advantage of September was Crazy Locha giving it to our Moobot. Thank you so much, Crazy Locha. That's funny. As always, just on a, on a roll. Uh, Shades of Blue subscribed for uh, 36 months. So, so very much thank you for that. Uh, I know. Hamigan is so subscribed. Or, no, sorry. Hamigan is comment. Hold on. <laughs> this is the worst. Did you sub to us before we stream? <laughs> yeah. So long. Before we even exist. Oh, yeah. Uh, Mr. Jingleheimer subscribed. Uh, Mr. Jingleheimer gave two bits. Crazy Locha gave out 10 subs. Thank you so, so much. Earth Mage uh, subscribed to tier one. Okay, wow. This is much more hard th- than it was. Wachani did 50 <laughs> bits. Uh, Crazy Locha did another subscription. Uh, Hopeful Optimist did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bits. Oh my god. Uh, Crazy Locha did another uh, thing. Earth Mage does a number of bits that I can't count quickly. Ten <laughs> bits, it seems. Crazy Locha gave another ten subs oh away. My oh my gosh. gosh. Mr. Jingleheimer did 10,000 bits. Am I reading Whoa. that right? Oh. What? It's um, September, not bit <laughs> <Bit-vember. laughs> What? Oh, Why I keep that blowing past that. Ren Reb did 100 bits. Thank you so very much. I think we're at like a hype train fourth billion at this point. Dulcity, I don't even know what's happening anymore. Uh, gifted a tier sub. Thank you so much. Uh, to the Maxwell, resubscribe. Oh, thank, oh, you guys. Oh. thank you. Thank this you all crazy. very much. I thank think you. I got everybody. I'm so sorry. I don't wow. know why Twitch hates me and I can't read anything uh, anymore. Thank you guys. I, I, <laughs> we joke and joke and joke, but it's incredibly touching and we're thrilled to bring you the next leg of the journey. Hoping. Which is where we're gonna throw it over to, unless anybody oh closing goodness. thoughts. Wait, uh, coinciding with oh. Oh. coinciding with the D23, teaser release. The D twenty three Expo did drop a teaser for the Percy Jackson series on Disney Plus. If that made you excited, my podcast will be covering the TV <laughs> show when it comes out. That's our ultimate goal. So you can check oh. it out. It's called CB Brain. It's on all platforms. Yeah. You guys aren't gonna do a dissection of the like three minutes of footage. Not oh, we're even. gonna know. Like thirty <laughs> seconds. Uh, we're recording one tomorrow night. Okay. A seven and a half hour think piece on the 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> the teaser was literally like 24 seconds or yeah. something. Okay. Are you on this. Apple Podcast too? Oh yeah, we also distribute oh. the anchor. You don't listen to go. it, but you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. We're going to throw it over to the intro. When we come back, we will dive in to chapter 12, oh. season two of A Peek Beneath the Veil. Oh my goodness. Let's oh. do it. Okay, go.
In Season 2, Chapter 11, Lost Shames and Clearing Names, the voice in Kiimi's head returned with new details <laughs> about the fall of Manasami, the town that once lay within the heart of the Ebwoods centuries ago. The murdered caretaker who'd been falsely accused of necromancy had a sister who was a powerful wizard, and upon returning home to find her brother dead, started down a path of vengeance. Rather than attack the people directly, she traveled underground to a network of abandoned tunnels dug out by frostworms long before the city was established. Using transmutation magic, she weakened the foundation of the rock, and after years of pressure building and building, Manasami collapsed into the giant sinkhole where it rests today. Again, the voice was unsure of how this history of old was related to the curse, but he believed we'd find answers in the ruins which was also looking more and more like where the lodestone might be located, based on early indications from Orba's compass that she received from Ichabus Altamari. Treading deeper into the woods, uneven terrain necessitated a switch to traveling on foot, and also made it more difficult to spot traps, which we had reason to believe the kobolds of the area had been setting throughout the forest. In the distance, we spotted someone we thought had fallen into such a trap, but instead it turned out he'd entered it voluntarily, a surprise that was overshadowed by the realization of exactly who it was. We'd last crossed paths with Ravi Magomet just after leaving Urinchupa when he was stationed at a Broken Crown checkpoint, and now he was searching the Ebwoods for someone caught up in what he thought was a conspiracy in Katil. He too was headed for the ruins, and we were happy to have another skilled sword by our side, though it was important to Ravi that we not spook his quarry, thus preventing us from finding out why he'd come here. Down the craggy slopes of the forest we went, the leaves changing color before our eyes. It wasn't long before rumors of this place being haunted became reality, tortured spirits appearing in ethereal forms, wailing and pleading as they relive the horrors of the Great Collapse. It was hard to resist the temptation to ease their suffering, but in doing so, several of us were afflicted with a bane of the Ebwoods, a malaise that made us feel as if they had borrowed a bit of our life's essence. Hurrying forward in an attempt to put their cries out of our minds, we thought we'd stumbled upon a lone kobold scratching symbols into a tree, but it turned out to be a kind of researcher in a rather elaborate and convincing yeah. costume. That kind of rolled. <laughs> <laughs> the Ocus had come to the Ebwoods to study the reptilian humanoids, and while we got the impression that he was collecting more than just data, he did turn out to be a solid source of information. In addition to identifying several of the markings we'd spotted, Theokas confirmed that the man Ravi was pursuing, Malik, had passed through very recently, so we thanked him for his help and made for the Ebwoods crater, which was fast coming into view. As if the ground had opened up to swallow it whole, the ruins of Manasami lay hundreds of feet below, <laughs> ravaged structures and crumbling facades that were once home to a vibrant community, now chilling and ominous in their stillness. Because of the near vertical sides of the crater, the only ways down that didn't require magic were climbing or using one of the crude kobold lifts that had been installed by these crafty creatures. Playing it safe, we decided to take the lift in two separate groups. First, Safira went with Robbie, who took this moment of privacy to admit that he was in a stickier situation than he first let on. When they reached the bottom, Robbie spotted something moving through the haze that looked like it could be Malik, just a stone's throw from where they stood. And not wanting to let him slip away, the two of them gave chase. Graven, Kaimi, and Orva stepped onto the platform next, <laughs> but a small pack of kobolds emerged at the tree line, and even quickening the pace of our descent couldn't get us out of range from vials of poison that they were hurling over the pit's edge. Orva blocked one attack with the shield spell, but Graven was not so lucky, and as he felt the caustic substance wash over him, he began to fade from consciousness. The effects had less to do with the poison's potency and more to do with the fact that it was sourced from a chimera, which caused flashes of Graven's troubled past to overtake his mind. He toppled from the lift, and Orba and Kiimi leapt after him. As they drifted to the ground with the assistance of the Featherfall spell, we asked ourselves. Between the parchment and the raven's feathers, what had Malik come so prepared for down here in the ruins? Would Mr. Curse have another revelation now that he'd returned to Manasami? And were we about to find that Graven's gray skin was a boon as we attempted to stuff him into a hiding spot oh amongst God. the rubble? Oh, yeah. We find out now on Season 2, Chapter 12 of A Peak Beneath the Veil.
You keep your feet light as you step from chunk to chunk of this fragmented city. Mosses creeping up the walls and around corners. A fog hanging low, but with cons constantly varying density so that each stride forward comes with the uncertainty of whether you might be able to see 40 feet in front of you or four. You notice as you shuffle onward that the glimpses you catch of those head height vertical black streaks seem to be getting smaller and smaller. The object of your pursuit is either faster than you or simply better acquainted with this route through the ruins. More than once you look back and think that Sephira has fallen behind or changed course only to watch her emerge from this sheet of cloud, keeping pace and holding her left arm cocked back so she can unshoulder her bow at a moment's notice if needed. The time that you spend following this figure is probably much shorter than it feels, but the constant threat of traps was overbearing even when your sight lines were clear throughout the forest, let alone now when it would be nearly impossible to estimate numbers if a pack of kobolds were bearing down on you. You move a little further. And just as you feel yourself slipping behind to the point of you're almost kind of guessing now where you last saw a little shadow, an outline, a figure, you're getting a little worried that you might sort of lose the trail or get lost. But your footsteps start to echo like a little bit, just a little like, like almost as if you'd entered from an outdoor to an indoor space, kind of. And at this moment, there's also kind of a mild clearing of the fog. You slow your pace and you look up to see that you've entered into a great stone archway, coming to a peak high above your head, not without its blemishes, but surprisingly intact for a city that was swallowed up by these sinkholes. So there's these big, tall walls that just come up to a point, kind of way, way up above your head, at least 20, 30 feet up above your head. Some pieces of wooden scaffolding have been inserted to bolster its stability after the fact. It looks like maybe the kobolds have reinforced this portion of the ruin. But there are still plenty of broken gaps which allow rays of sunlight to fill the interior of this space. Now this archway, which sort of makes a tunnel going forward, because you have walls on two sides, extends about 50, 60 feet in front of you. And you finally catch an unobstructed glimpse of the dark-haired dwarf that you know to be Malik. So you get to the edge of this fog, and you have to stop for a moment, because if up until now, the fog has kind of come and went, but now it kind of clears a little bit. There's a clear sight line, not only for you to him, but if he was to look over his shoulder, he would see you. I need you and Saphir to both give me stealth checks right off the bat. Ooh, oh, baby. It's <clears throat> 14. Oh, I can't do the math. Oh, 22. 22, nice. okay, great. Just as you guys feel that, as soon as your feet are tapping down on the, on the stone floor and it makes those just slight echoing noises, you immediately know that that's a moment to slow your pace maybe shuffle a little bit instead of taking steps just so you don't have that sound fill the area. And your footsteps move forward and they don't make enough sound to alert Malik. He doesn't seem to look over his shoulder. Mm -hmm. And what you notice as you look out in through this kind of little, it's not a tunnel because it's bigger than that, but this little sort of enclosed area, he's walking rather strangely. You see him like take a step forward and turn like a hard 90 degrees. Oh no. Take another step oh, forward. Shit. Oh, turn that. another hard 90 degrees. So he's like moving oh, almost on a grid of some okay. kind. I hate that. Sort of these jutting motions, and in, including the sort of angles at which he's walking, he does like a little hop each time too. Just a small one, like just a little hop. Turns hard, Okay. another little hop. So you're watching him sort of dot his way through this area. It's hard to see clearly through the haze hovering just above the ground but it looks like the floor where he's walking is arranged in a kind of grid with gaps between the tiles. And between, so each tile is kind of sitting it down and these gaps, it just looks black down there. Like it looks like it's deep, some kind of pit that, you know, is between these tiles. Looks a little something like this. Oh, come on. Oh, here we go, here we go, here we go. Oh, that wooden box had something underneath it. <laughs> Shocking, I know. What? You and Sephira are like just. What is this? What is this? Tomb Raider? Nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> and, well, look at your pointy boots. <laughs> 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 Let's see. Don't step on the wrong. 
Well, Malik does not have a bow drawn, but he has one here. So he's like <laughs> hopping between some of these tiles. Right. And just as you're getting to the edge and getting a good look, it looks like he's like gets to the, all the way to the other side. Oh, so shit. he's just gotten to the other side of this whole area. And you watch as he gets to the other side, he looks like he had something that he was looking at and then he sort of stuffs it back into a little pouch okay. by his side. Um, what are you guys doing at this moment as you're watching him do that? So he's gotten to the other side. He's sort of, it looked like it was stressful to him. Like he sort of takes a breather. He's still facing the opposite direction. It looks like there is a door that he's kind of headed for on the opposite uh, wall of this area. So Having what are you guys doing? seen the fog when we were coming up, mm -hmm. I want to have been, as we're walking up, ripping off little pieces of my tunic and leaving them in a little trail okay, sort sure. of behind me so that I know that the others have a way to find us. Um, and then as we're... Slowly getting more and more naked as you move. <laughs> <laughs> Sabira's in a crop top now. <laughs> She's like, I hope this place isn't big. <laughs> like, oh, like, I don't... <laughs> um, Is there anything to hide? Behind, is there a risk that he, at this point, now that he's passed this, can he turn around and see us? If he did, he could if you sort of wander your way out into this area, okay. but if you stay back right at the edge of where that is, that's where the kind of fog is sort of obscuring and a little thicker there. So if you if you started to turn, you would kind of disappear back into the fog if you took a few quick steps back. But yes, if he turned around. If, if I'm looking along the wall there, mm -hmm. on the walls, is there a reasonable way that we could gain purchase and sidle our way across the wall if we were climbing uh, you without would, touching any of those little squares? You would have to find some way to really dig into those walls. This again is a, With it's a like man-made structure. Pit, per se? This is a man-made structure, so the walls are like flat, like completely nine, flat. Vertical and yeah, so possibly it might be very, How very much difficult. of the pattern did we see? Of his walking on it? Give me a perception check. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> Four. Just about none. <laughs> you saw him hopping from the last one to the other side. Hard to tell. But did I uh, see yeah. <laughs> You did not. You were too focused on on the yeah, it didn't occur to you at first that, again, he was already kind of all the way to the other side before you even realized that he was kind of moving in a, in a weird pattern. So I'm going to kind of ask quietly as I can. Right, so... Jesus cave whisper. I think the problem is there was definitely some kind of pattern there. I didn't catch all of it, so I think we step on the wrong thing. Some, I don't know, I'm imagining that we sink even further into the ground or something terrible happens or there's some kind of mechanism that gets triggered. So I'm not sure what we're going to do, because I have a climbing kit, but that's really sheer, and I don't think we can make that. So, uh... So the floor is so has we, traps and You can't, like, fly and... or anything, or jump really far, or we couldn't, like, lay down a slack line or something. <laughs> so how could he... He must have... He, he had a sheet you didn't see. He took out, like, a... He took out like a sheet thing and he was he put it away as he was going towards that door. Well, we also have a sheet thing. Can I go a little closer to the sort of the, the things and see you if You would I... be wide out in the open if you walked up to there, but yes, he's not facing you. Uh, can I check my surrounding, my periphery before I do this? Give me a perception check, please. Your vision Screw behind you is severely limited, this part but of the in front of you better. it's very open. Oh, you Ooh. know what? It actually is. 17. 17. You give it a listen, and both sight and sound, like behind you or anything, you don't hear anything approaching or anything. Okay. And you have a wide open view of this. So you can then very I'm clearly. Very quietly one take other a step thing up. that you see as you're sort of giving a better look there. Yes. There is what looks like um, sort of at this area over here. It, it, that's sort of a signifier, not exactly what it looks like. It looks like a. Um, like a large, there's sort of a, an axle sort of sticking up out of the ground, and then a few spokes sticking out of it. Like it's something you can turn. Right, so right. it's like a okay. big sort of capstan uh, on a ship for raising and lowering anchor almost. Well, so you notice that. Or like shuffling there. these squares or in, something. In addition okay. to that, <laughs> the, that pillar that rotates, that little axle in the middle, looks like it currently has a symbol on it. Okay. Oh shit. Looks like yeah. it has. Symbol we've seen before. Symbol we've seen before. It looks like it has this symbol. Oh. Uh, oh. What is that? Triple. Oh my goodness. 
This. It's a triple bird. <laughs> um, this okay. temple, it, it appears all over this sheet. Right, but this I'm must wondering... be some sort of key or guide to get across this. Yes, what I'm wondering is what, if anything, does it say on those little squares? Can I see any markings on those little squares? The tiles are perfectly flat with no markings on them at all. <sighs> we have no idea what that symbol means, do we? So that could mean anything from good food is here to you're imminently going to die. It could mean step here, <laughs> or it could mean, mean definitely absolutely don't step here. Absolutely not step here. <laughs> <laughs> Narrowed it down a little bit. <laughs> as you guys are discussing, you can think as you're discussing. Is sir, you can ask your question. Go ahead. Is the grid eight by eight? The grid is eight by eight. As you guys are discussing and thinking and looking. He's collected himself a little bit. Mm-hmm. His little pouch over. So his we shoulder. can still see him. Yeah, yo, you, it's okay. wide open here, not foggy at all. It's very clear because it's kind of under this arc. He can so still see us. No, if he are. turned around, oh, you, you'd have to you'd have to quickly kind of dart okay. back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He takes his hand up, and at first he looks like he's about to knock on that far door, but then he stops for a moment and he kind of just makes sure that that headband with the raven's feathers is kind of upright and clear, sort of not. A skew in any way. And then he. It's quite a... Do not go in. Do not go in. And after a little bit of time, <gasps> sounds like the door opens. And it opens up, Fuck. and a little reptilian snout <gasps> sticks its way out. And it whips open, and two little kobolds with spears pull him up to Malik instantly, like pressing into his chest. Like it looks like it hurts. Like he presses, they press that hard, and immediately he sort of ah, 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 and he ducks his head down and sort of presents the crown of raven's feathers atop his head. And the kobolds look. And they take their spears back. And they start to pat him up and down. Oh my god. Sort of patting his pockets, his back, and he lets them. He stays there kind of with his hands out. And it, it, they, at one point, they grab that little, the, he had stuffed that note into like a little satchel that slung over his shoulder. One of them grabs the satchel and kind of looks into it and tosses it to the side. So the satchel kind of okay. gets tossed. We see where that gets tossed. Yeah, kind of behind okay. the little yeah. capstan there. So the kobolds pat him down a little more and then sort of convinced that he doesn't seem to be a threat of any kind. One of them turns and he follows him in. Oh my so God. he follows one of these kobolds in, <laughs> closing the door behind him temporarily. Is the, one of the kobolds out? The no? second kobold okay. goes over to the capstan. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. Starts to rotate it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and a different symbol yeah. appears on facing you now. So he and he and then he turns and goes back through the door. Sounds like a lot. So now you're out here. What the hell <laughs> is going on? I have no fucking Those clue. The lizard friends, yes. They're friends? I mean, they're little lizard thing. They're the kobolds. I don't know what the fuck. They clearly. It's like a whole. I didn't expect them to be this. Organized? I guess, yeah, that, that's a word for it. Okay, they're I have an idea. They're crafty, they're very, or they can, they're so very tall. It's not in a good spot, exactly, obviously. But that satchel that he had, that had the key, the note that he had. So, if I tie a rope to one of my arrows, try to shoot it, maybe we can grab that and get our way across. I, I think we have to try, even, we have some of it, but without the full thing, we would get stuck halfway through and not know which I mean, way to turn. I don't know that even having the key necessarily means that we can solve the puzzle. Why did the symbols change? I don't know what the symbols mean. It was the circles, and now it's this. Both of these symbols are on the key. It must have something to do with a way to get across, but it's impossible to know. Can I try mm-hmm. to take a length of rope that I think you would have a be... Of I have a climbing. Okay, so, yeah, that has a rope in it. Um, it's a pretty thick rope and a climbing kit. I actually kit. don't know if I have... I think that's on my saddlebag. Oh, no. Uh, a rope that would be in a climbing kit is also... That's, like, thick rope. That's, like, you know, for keeping yourself falling. 
I don't know that an arrow could fly through the yeah. air with that rope tied to it. Yeah. Hmm. Fuck sake. I could don't know I how we're going to get that. use fine traps here? You can, if you want. Yeah, oh. yeah let's okay. do that. Probably takes a moment. Just sort of sensing the presence there. And you take a moment to just let the sort of feeling of the magic wash over you or the potential for any sort of hostile, you know, contraptions of any kind. It does seem like, I, I don't think the spell actually it doesn't let you specify exactly where it is. It gives okay. you the presence of, but here in front of you, there seems to be some kind of potential trap rigged in this sort of tile feed oh, here. So, yeah. <laughs> well, that was not very helpful. <laughs> <laughs> Are there... Robbie's up... like, <laughs> if I look up at nope. the ceiling, <laughs> as I thought. Bad news. <laughs> if I look up at the ceiling, is there anything that could be grippable on the ceiling, or is there anything that could reasonably like yeah, look like it gross. be hung or something? From the ceiling? <laughs> Uh, with an incredible throw. I mean, it's so there's cracks in it that have kind of been reinforced by the kobolds. You'd have to, it, it's like 30 feet up too. So right. you're potentially, but that's, you know, okay. you're looking at. There is no other way across. We must figure out the Don't lean forward too far, sorry. For the microphone. Don't lean forward too far. Puzzle. <laughs> uh, we must figure out this map, this puzzle. It's the only way to get across. It would seem, yeah. I'm, I'm Is there anything heavy, anything that we could put on one of the things to test what happens? So there's a, like, you've walked through the ruins, there's chunks of rubble everywhere. Yeah. Like, if there's heavy stones, for sure. Yeah. Let's pick up some stones. Come with me. We're going to gather some shit. I don't know. <laughs> and let's go and, I guess, gather some heavy stones that we yeah. think are, like, all, you know, like, at least cobalt weight. Okay. That's um, pretty heavy. Yeah. So, and then I want to... Okay, here's what I think we do. So you find a piece that's like, it looks like it's a chunk of kind of a, an overhang that fell down, so you get it by the corners, you kind of... <clears throat> Mate, that means fuck all to me. I'm just going to put one stone on each of these things, see what the fuck happens, yeah? All right. It may set off an alarm that lets them all know that we're here. <laughs> but, uh, I feel like this is... How about I mean, this? The, the, it, I'm not the, exactly... The symbol sure. is this right now, yes? That, yeah, but there are no symbols anywhere else. So. Yes, but we have this. I'm not sure if it's this way or this way, but we might as well start by trying. Is that if we the put, same dimensions? Yeah, it's, it's eight by eight, eight just by eight. as this. Okay. If we put one of the rocks on this symbol, on okay. that third one right at the front. All right, all right. I like we have a 50-50 I... chance of getting it right. I... I... <laughs> <laughs> well, now that you put it that way. So let's try then the rock on that uh, on that one. All right. Give me an athletics check as we'll see what you carry that rock. Oh, dang it. Can they touch hands while they're... <laughs> <laughs> Settle down. It's kind of big. Uh... Hey. Athletics <laughs> yeah. I want to know. Uh, oh, God. 23. 23. It's all You sort of get strong. down <laughs> underneath the... Uh, so much stronger than me. <laughs> underneath the piece of... Under the trunk of bubble. Ooh, a good lift. And you're kind of... The two of you kind of waddling, so... So you're carrying it between you, the two of you. <laughs> and that's the one you're doing there? The third one? Yes. That's the... Uh, Welcome. <laughs> it's the most unhelpful I don't like I've these ever pits. Seen. I don't like Even if these you're, pits at all. And you have third it kind one. of in position. Sorry, third one. Is you that in position? Mm -hmm. the, the are the triangles like? Nothing? They're not. They're not different. What oh, do you mean? I the, see, the, the, the the two types of tiles. I, 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 <laughs> I thought those were like pits of darkness. It looks like the courtyard had been like you know design like there's designs in the in the tile of the courtyard, but yeah, it's they can't tell any difference between the types of tiles. So take that stone. Are you guys tossing it on there? Yep. <laughs> and it, you have to almost throw it a little bit because, again, there are little gaps between each of these tiles. So you give it a little toss, and the chunk... <clears throat> comes to a stop. <gasps> okay. <laughs> okay. 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 There's, there's even kind of... It, as you get closer to the edge, it's the first time you've gotten to the edge, and you get a little more of a look into the pit. You can't see the bottom of it, but it looks like each of these platforms is like supported by a beam. So it's like a flat top with a single beam. And as oh the rock God. lands on it, it almost like... Jesus Christ. 
just groans a little bit under the weight. So there's a tile with a rock on top. Okay, what does that thing say for the next one? The next one is the f- uh, the fourth line on the next row. Okay, and I'm gonna start to lift up the rock okay, from that one. You cannot get on. You cannot stand on that tile. Oh, and lift and up the pick rock. Pick up the rock at the same. So we must. <laughs> We must remove the rock we just put down. <laughs> okay, yes. And then one of us must step on there. <laughs> Fuck the rock. I think... <laughs> <laughs> so Fear's like, we just put it there. This has been a good experiment. We see that it works. This was a limited experiment. I, I think... You we, it, man. we step. We move. We follow. There's a clear no, no, line. No, no, we no, step no, no, what, one, what, what happens? Mate, what happens right there? Is there well, any way? Fall off this the, will get us the, more the, than no, halfway. No, no, no. Yeah, this but, will get us to the fifth but, row. Yeah, but then what? Mate, what's in the middle of that? Do what are you going to do? In your... arrow to the satchel thing from no, the, the fifth the row as opposed to The distance like... wasn't the issue. The, it, an arrow won't fly with a climbing rope tied to it. That's It's too heavy. So, I, 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 what I'm saying is, we're going to do this. We can get to halfway. And then the only way we can figure out where it's safe to step is with a rock. <laughs> it's the only way. <laughs> I don't see any other way we can do it. So what I think is we take a rock and we we go through on the key part, on the, on the, on the, the you know, the part where it says it's written. And then once we get to the unsure part, we're going to have to take the rock and say, here, no, here, no, you know? And that's what I'm also worried. If we get it wrong once, does the whole thing scramble? Do they run out and change the little thing again? And what happens if they change the little thing again while we're on the thing? Do we just fall into the abyss? There's another How wrinkle as you're looking it at it, which is that you watched Malik do this. The gaps between them are not huge, but big enough that you have to like do a little Jump. hop. Oh shit. Which carrying a boulder of the size that you just grabbed hopping like okay. that would be. You need a smaller rock. One more, <laughs> oh, One more experiment. One more experiment. I'm getting smaller rocks. I'm gonna walk away and I'm gonna find some smaller rocks that I could reasonably sure. keep in like a handful in my hand. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Where's the next step on that thing? The next one And I'm gonna kind of reference it and it's the... Second row would be fourth line. Yeah. Um, and I'm gonna so, take the, one of the uh, smaller I rocks. I knew we brought you back for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> you, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. out now. I'm <laughs> out. There you go. Yeah, that one right there. Um, I'm going to take one of the smaller rocks and kind of like toss, toss it, it so that it lands on there. It hits it and then bounces off and then goes down into the pit. But, <laughs> but it stays. It hit and it, nothing happened, but then it kind of bounced. As an experiment then, to the next one over, <gasps> I'm going to toss a little rock. Like one that isn't the symbol that you're looking yeah. at? Right. Okay. Uh-oh. Which one are you throwing at? Just the one that's next, like next to it. The fifth line of the second row. Nothing. It's a off. So it it doesn't make any kind of noise or groan either. It's. It doesn't look like it was heavy enough to influence the the weight on the okay. on the time. It's clearly weight sensitive in some capacity. I just don't know how. If I my bag is pretty heavy that I'm carrying, right? Sure. So if I were to try. To I'm gonna toss your bag into the abyss? <laughs> no, I meant if I had my hands on it and I put it down, can I see if that triggers anything? Like, if, could, could, presumably if I'm holding it, I can take it up. Yeah. Um, so I'm gonna try to put that on the one that's incorrect, the one that's next door to the correct one. Which one, on this first row on here? On the second row. Uh, you can't reach out. Oh, I guess, then I'll put it on the first row. That's this fine. one, like, right so in front does, of you there? It accomplishes the same thing. Sure. So I'm just so gonna let it sit until it gets, like, a little heavier. You let the bag get down, and your bag, I don't know, probably weighs 30, 40 pounds. You put, the, put it down, and as you're starting to let go of some of the weight, you hear, like, a, like a okay, groan. Okay, then I'm gonna kind of. And as you bring the bag back up, it, like, is like teetering a oh. little bit. <gasps> okay. Well, good news. It doesn't outright collapse instantly. Do I want to be running on teetering platforms? No. I mean, no! Quite a bit heavier than your bag. So I feel like it might... we step on the wrong one, we fall. And most likely die. <sighs> With some deep thinking, we're going to pivot over for a moment. 
Oh, oh my gee. god. <laughs> Drifting down the sides of the crater, there's a loud recurring noise as the lift is banging against the wall on its Shit. way back up. So as you guys went off because of the weight of Graven, especially like kicking it, <clears throat> it's going like <clears throat> on its way back up, making this loud kind of clattering. Yeah. It spirals dangerously as it quickly disappears from sight, and it continues to rattle as you try to orient yourself mid-air. Orba shouts Graven's name, that's where we left off before, but gets no response. The burns along his arms and neck still glowing after getting splashed by whatever toxic substance was contained within the vials. About eight seconds of free-falling uncertainty, and then finally the ground starts to come up underneath you. The effects of the Featherfall spell allow you to point your feet, so you kind of orient yourself quickly, get your feet pointed toward the ground, getting for a safe landing. Though no such benefit is afforded to someone unconscious oh, okay. who can't sort of orient themselves. So the two of you kind of feet touch down and you watch as Graven almost reverse belly flops. Oh. <laughs> His back sort of splattering against the ground there. Not in a dangerous way, but in an uncomfortable look. You take a quick look around. The only thing standing out amongst the rubble is, and Ravi and Severa saw this before, it's kind of a temple or shrine looking building on your right. Only two of its four walls are still standing and most of the staircase that's leading up to it is thick in a sheet of vines. You have very little time to evaluate your surroundings, however, before a loud clack on stone rings out. It sounds like they've stopped throwing vials and are now chucking rocks down. You see a couple of piece of rock that just splits into a couple pieces. Dexterity saving. Oh, oh come on, God. man! Uh, Raven's unconscious. Like, I know. Be Raven fails automatically. And we'll 17. 17. It's Eight. seven. What's <laughs> that like that? You can, the speed, simply the distance that the rocks have fallen, they've picked up quite a bit of speed and they give you a good wallop kind of on their way oh, down. No. Of a wall uh, six bludgeoning worth Ooh, of a wall. Ow. So one of these sort of medium-sized stones just <laughs> pelts you, and you kind of go down to Maybe one knee. Graven gets hit by one of the rocks as well. Uh, yeah. He doesn't move, and there's just like a doosh, just sort of a dirty sort of thud on his chest. Orb is like immediately trying to do her best to like keep her eyes up at the sky, but also just dodging rocks, yeah. trying to get to Graven, just you shouting his name. Him. You start shouting his name. It's echoing out through the ruins as you're shouting Graven's name. You get no response. After a couple moments, that glowing in his veins fades and he returns to kind of a normal appearance, but he does not return to consciousness. Uh, Orvis is just going to put her hand on his chest to see if his like chest is rising. He does and seem to be breathing. Yes. Okay. I'm going to look around for like covered places, like where we could possibly hide him. That sure. We... There's that temple right nearby that sort of has it's partially still standing. There's pieces of rubble you could duck underneath. The rocks are still falling. Yep, some of them are still falling. So make a decision or we'll do another round of dexterity saving uh, throws. Can you help me? Help me? Help oh, me? Um, I'm, I'm gonna, gonna start grabbing his ankles. And I'm me, gonna get his arms. Give me athletics check. Oh, oh my gosh. The athletics? Mm -hmm. Well, I guess Orb is tall. No, I'm, not the, strong. I'm the littlest in the world. Oh my god, it's Natural 20! <laughs> oh my god. Kaimi goes to grab and slips on the tile and kind of falls the stone there, but Orba sort of summoning strength for her friend the here. The yep. oh. She grabs him by the legs <laughs> and with one leg under each. Arm starts to slide, and Kiimi, instead of trying to pick him up, just grabs him by the shoulders and pushes, like oh, as Orba sort of sliding him across the ground. More rocks kind of falling, and finally you get far enough away from the side of the of the crater here. And again, they can't see you, and you can't see them. The fog is thick, so they're just chucking blindly rocks down here. So you get a little bit further away, so that this spray of rocks finally a few more fall, and then sounds like they stop throwing. Okay, uh, Orb is gonna like tilt Graven up or try to like sit him up against like a sure. wall or, or anything. And just, uh, again, just try to get it. Graven! 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 He looks out to me. I, I don't know what happened. I've seen him take much worse than this. I don't know what that was. His skin doesn't normally glow and stuff like that? Not normally. Okay, um, should we. Should we cover him up with a bunch of. He's kind of the same color as the rocks. Do you think we could like hide him here? Should we. Should we take him into that eerie looking temple over there. Can you go peek into the temple and I'll keep an eye? Just see what's in there? Yes, I'm gonna run over there really quick. Make quiet. an investigation check. Okay. As you're running over there. This cleric, his safety is important to you. <gasps> yeah. Oh my, <laughs> how many times do we have to go over this? He's my friend. Friend. 
We do not need him to break the curse. Okay, are you withholding information from me? And I'm talking as I'm running, right? Yep, I'm still yep, running over the yep. temple. Okay. I'm moving towards him. Very well. This temple was a temple to Deiruku, the, the Kelkian god of love and lust. And inside are private booths of prayer because one who sought guidance from Deiruku would do so in isolation. Some of these prayer booths may still yet stand, a good a place as any to hide a body from sight. That was really helpful, nice information. <laughs> what was the investigation? 18. <laughs> <laughs> so the, both his suggestion and your own ability to sort of salvage through the rub uh, rubble, you move through what, there's like a door that's kind of on one hinge and you kind of push it open and it even <laughs> falls apart a little bit. But as you push through it, you see like, it looks like it was once like a, a little aisle and then on both the left and right sides, little cubicles almost for sort of private prayer. You can see little rods where maybe a curtain once hood, there is no, there are no curtains anymore, but there's, mo most of them are crumbled, but there's at least one or two that if you put someone in there, I mean, they certainly wouldn't be visible unless somebody came in here, so. Okay. Great, I'm Incredible. going to uh, like step back out of the temple and like give a, give a wave and a thumbs up and then run back over to help Orba pull okay. Graven. Okay, there's a place inside? Um, yeah, lots of lots of little hiding spaces. He should be fine. Let's get, let's get him over here as fast as possible. Okay, thank you. Let me athletics checks again. <laughs> it's not gonna be as good. It's gonna be bad. Don't jinx yourself. 15. Uh, athletics, seven. Seven, okay, you guys are starting to move. You're you're picking him up and you've got him pretty secure, but it's up a few stairs, so you're very slowly, kind of one step at a time. <laughs> yeah, every time it hits, sorry, Grim. Oh, sorry, His Grim. legs are kind of tapping against the, <laughs> the stone. As you guys are moving, you hear a few more disjointed rattling noises. And it sounds like the lift is coming back. No. At first. But in addition to the sounds of the lift sounding like it's coming back down, there's another sound like something's moving through the air quickly. And you even see some of the fog like. And something comes through the fog, sort of reddish and with a tail and oh. hits the ground and like no. blood spatters out to one side. Oh. The tail kind of curls up in a creepy sort of disjointed way. And part of the jaw just oh, breaks off and Kobold teeth go flying oh. as one of the kobolds from up above lost their footing or something has slipped and down and has fallen all the way down Hi. and just hits the bottom. And you even as you're pulling Graven up the steps, you get hit with like blood spray spatter from oh. the uh, from the kobolds. Um, Orba's gonna just drop Graven and get in front of him and like kind of block whatever vision. Okay. Whoever you can keeps hear. Coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Amy, can you manage? I'm gonna try to fend off whoever this is. Um, manage pulling his body? Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna pull his <laughs> body. Uh, uh, very slowly you're making progress on the stairs. I'm just gonna be like on guard. I'm Anything you're doing, you can hear that lift. If I see another little red guy either fall or get off that lift, I'm holding, uh, I'm holding, let's say, Ray of Frost. Okay, give me a perception check. Okay. I can't read these perception. I can't read my dice. <laughs> uh, six. Six. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> I feel like you stalled so you didn't have to say what that number was. Six. Six. <laughs> uh, so that rattling noise continues. And finally, the lift pushes through the fog. You start to see the bottom of it, just that simple wooden platform. And by now, Kimi's like to the top of the stairs, but you haven't gotten into the temple yet. So you've gotten Graven just to that last step, and you're starting to see the lift descend below the fog. And riding it down, hand on one of the suspension ropes to sort of keep themselves steady, is a rather haggard looking half elf. Not injured, but heavily fatigued. And even with the motion of the descent, you can see his chest rising and falling noticeably. It looks like his ride down the side of the crater could be one of the first times he's taken a breather since the last time you saw him. And Erlen comes down through the fog. And finally, <sighs> reaches the bottom of the crater there, still standing on the crater. So just because you weren't here when we talked about the lift, if you step off of the lift based on the weight, it will head back mm. up. So if you want the lift to stay, you would have to put something on it. I is, just want to remind you. Is there like a rock nearby? There's quite a few, yeah. There's rubble all over the place, pieces of structures that have- And I'm like, I have like some fairly recent like 
blood, actually. On yeah, a little yeah, sort yeah. of spatters and scrapes yeah, yeah. across the sides there. Orba clearly <laughs> drops what she's... Do I see Orba, or...? Yes. Uh, Kiimi, you haven't seen yet. She's pulling Graven up the steps, but you see Orba. She's, like, in ready attack position at the base there. You all right? Orba just runs over to him. Like, runs over the little gross kobold body and yeah. just hops over him and runs and just embraces One foot her through legs. the kobold blood makes kind of a wet step. You all right? Yeah. Are you? I'll be fine. How did... What? There'll be time. There'll be time. Okay. There'll be time. Um, Where are the others? I don't... Is, I'm going to sort of put a hand on each of Orba's shoulders and, like, actually give her a look. You're right. Yeah. You're not bleeding. Like, like an I'm, old Italian grandfather. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. I'm okay. You're, you're fine. I'm okay. She looks physically um, in pretty yeah. decent shape. A little tired, but... I'm sorry. I am sorry. We can talk. Um, grave it, so... Get off of this, and she's gonna start trying oh, to find no. a rock to put on it. Okay. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. There needs to be a rock that goes yeah, yeah, on. Yeah, I'm looking for one. Can yeah, you help me we'll say you guys can yeah. find it. The, the, the temple ruins are right there, so there's pieces of chunks of the, the buildings right there, so you can find this one. This is our only way out. All right, all right. I'll sort of push you up. Get a rock on there, and you can see that the lift is standing steady there at the base. And then she's gonna start walking, knowing that Orla's just gonna follow her. All right, yeah. Okay, so really quick bullet points. Um, Kaimi ran into us again, and she's kind of with us no, down No, I know, here. and Ravi, yes. What? Where's Goliath? Where's okay, Sephira? That's. I don't know where Sephira is, and Graven's unconscious, and I don't know why. But why she wasn't is, very far at this point. Yeah. If you've walked, you're I'm basically. Still, I'm, I'm yeah. pulling him. This is whole he stable? I'm, gonna, I'm running to go help you. Uh, I, I heard you were yeah. all safe. Who is telling you this? The the halfling with the kobold. Oh, the kobold guy. The. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh. All right, that makes sense. Uh, Graven. <laughs> was hit by some kind of a poison, I would imagine, and Ur- Erland, I've never seen anything like it, and he just kind of passed out. I don't know what's wrong with it. I saw the kobolds throwing. Did you see what it was? I, I saw uh, some, uh, looked like potion bottles, and yeah. and then rocks, and then I was able to kick one off, and the other two Oh, started. that was you? Yes, that oh, didn't good hit job. you, did it? No, just rocks. <laughs> okay, no, um, yes, Theokis, you, you left a trail. There was also a, a significant number of nipples <laughs> in the trees. <laughs> yeah, you found the nipples. Several. I, we can talk. It's all right. It's all right. I found the nipples. Oh, okay. We really wanted you to find No, I followed them. the nipples, yes. Okay. I thought it was strange, but quite clearly you. And then other... And I'll, when we're all to... I okay, can, yes. Wh- but Theokis said you were all safe. Where's... I don't know. We, we descended the lift after the two of them, and Do I don't know where they ran off to. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm helping, her. Okay, I'm helping her. Okay, now that I have Erlen, I'm going to be like... He followed the nipples! <laughs> <laughs> yes! Why are you wearing my clothes? Oh, um, just to be sneaky. They don't don't worry, fit do you, you want it back? N- they don't fit you. You're going to trip and fall. Is this really I've been the time so to have this I just don't want her. She's very Can nimble. I don't want her to trip and fall or on the... Can we yes, pick why? Up? I'm going to pick up his legs. <laughs> The three of you can, <laughs> he's heavy, but the three of you can carry him. You carry him into the temple there and through that sort of unhinged door, and you get to where those like little booths are just lined up there on the left and right. What is this place? Uh, uh, sex chapel? I don't know. Excuse what? me? <laughs> Mr. Curse in my head, he told me this was a place that people came to pray for romance and lust and love, and there were little tiny cubicles. I didn't ask too many Who questions. Who told you that? Oh, the voice in my head. It's her. She's the one that's cursed, and she's still cursed. No, I knew that she's... I implied that, but there's a boy... Mr. Curse? Yeah, Mr. Curse. <laughs> that one. They seem to have established a bit of a relationship at this point. It's fine. He has helpful information. He might have been from this town long ago before it was um, covered in rubble and everything. But sometimes he'll pop in and give me really useful information, like that this was a chapel and there would be little hidey spaces. So, here we go. And we okay. can trust this curse. Yes. Don't worry about it. Can look at Orba for Orba gives a, a nod. If I look around at this temple church, yeah. uh, does anything strike me as New Kelkian or the layout seems extremely totally sim- similar? Yeah. Um, you didn't hear the name, but the right. the New Kelkian god of love and lust is is not the same. But you right yeah. Yeah. the layout of this place looks very similar. Oh, oh that's yeah, the god, that's the god I prayed to actually. Yeah, this looks like Kuya's temple. Have I ever heard of these? 
gods. Uh, Kuya sounds familiar. That's one of the new Kelkian gods, which is a pretty, on this continent, so pretty, those gods, unlike Graven's gods specifically, there's gods that sort of more directly influence things, give people powers and stuff like Graven's. And then there's ones that might give you a little blessing or a little advice or something. They're far sort of more benevolent gods. The new Kelkian gods are pretty benevolent, so people pray to them, they might get like a little, yeah, sort of a little blessing of some kind. So, yes, you've heard of, you've heard of the new Kelkian gods. The one that, the one that um, yeah, the curse mentioned was not one that you had heard of. Okay, they were. Uh, that's the god that Erlen prayed to a little bit ago. Did yes, you feel anything in this space? <laughs> um, no. Uh, <laughs> your god sucks. <laughs> no, they're pretty benevolent. Kuzni gave me inspiration. Oh, <laughs> shut your goddamn mouth. <laughs> okay. All right, is this one of these cubbies? Yeah, okay, let's put them in a cubby. Mm -hmm. okay. Sort of try and prop them up so he's <laughs> Yeah, they're, they're definitely not big enough for him to be like lying on the floor. Like there's a little seat inside it. Yeah, trying yeah, to like prop him up so he's like. Is there like a curtain or anything or like a little There door? used to be curtains. Oh. There's like a rod up on up above the door frame, but there isn't now. It's like a time okay. that those have been ravaged by time. I only saw Theogus on my way here in some cobalt. Have you? Is this area well traveled? Are the Ebwoods well traveled? No, I would say it's pretty abandoned, except for the spirits that are trapped here. Yeah. Oh, did you talk to any spirits? I saw the spirits. I did not talk to them. Okay, good. Yeah, don't talk to them. <laughs> I figured that I had no business with the dead without you all with the live throne. Oh, thank you. Smart. Um. Did they hurt you, the spirits? Um. <laughs> there was a mother with a with a small child that seemed. Yeah. Sapphira yeah. touched that one. Um, I tried. I really tried. She's so strong. It's fine. We're fine. Don't um, worry about it. We need to find them. Speaking of Safira, um, or was gonna quickly this like is my tunic. As, <laughs> it's been a little busy. <laughs> uh, as we're like getting Graven set up, she's just gonna because she knows she's in Kuya's church temple thing. She'll just kind of put a hand on his cheek and just close her eyes and Kuya, please watch over this Goliath while we are gone. Please, please, please. Okay. Give me a religion check. Oh, God. Not that one. <laughs> <laughs> this one. Get your best guy. Religion. <laughs> I'm so religious. Oh, uh, That's an 18. 18. Oh. Walk me through what's in Orba's mind a little bit. I know she's sort of quickly, she just says a couple things very quickly, yeah. asking for help, but what is she sort of hoping for when she speaks to? She's hoping that when she comes back, Graven is awake and alive and normal. As you guys take a step out of the little um, uh, the little cubicle there, that rod that's above the door where a curtain once was, there's like a little shimmer. And a almost sort of, it looks real, a curtain kind of appears. Oh and you God. reach out to touch it and your hand just passes through it. It's like an illusion but it blocks sort of any kind of vision in. It just kind of wow. appears there on the side of the uh, of the prayer book. Thank you. Do we see that as well? Yes. Oh, it's visible, yes. I thought your gods were passive, do you? I wouldn't say they're passive. I would say that they're not the other ones. That was god magic? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's go. Let's go find them. I don't know where they went. Is 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 there any other than this person that Ravi is tracking? Is there any reason we're here? Are we just helping him? I'm here for certain reasons. Ravi's here for certain reasons. Also, there's something about a lodestone, right? The lodestone, the lodestone is down here, and I believe here. Sephira would like to use this as the spiritual location for the bow. It's a lot of stuff, but I think the more time-sensitive thing are these two people's things. Right, and I point to right. Robbie's. You can turn yeah. imaginary, <laughs> tell me, Tell me who we're tracking as we walk. Okay. Everybody give me investigation checks. Come on, oh. be investigative. Nice. Oh, 17. 24. 17. Nice. That is a nice, nice, nice. That's nice. a word. So as you guys move yeah. down from the steps of this little <laughs> temple here, perhaps the Temple of Love and Lust, you find uh, sort of a path that leads out, and the first thing you see is a couple deep indentations in soil that look like someone who was maybe standing still, you know, saw something and quickly pushed off. There's like a deep toe indent of a boot. And you look at that and you sort of chart the direction of that, and the next thing you see maybe 15 feet ahead is a little strip of <laughs> cloth that you find. Oh, Sephira's taking off her clothes. <laughs> That's I knew good. there was something going on <laughs> with her and the new guy. Is there? Pieces. Oh, you might be right. I saw it. We're gonna I go find him. Register. Sephira. 
Let's go. I've been gone. That's the funniest way to strip. Imagine just one little piece at a time. You want a little bit more? You want a little <laughs> bit more? If I do so it in pieces, funny. you won't know. He just looks over and Oh, shit, you're naked. I barely noticed my sails around. So, these things have been happening simultaneously, and the timeline's pretty similar, but a little bit, you guys are still here at the edge of the, uh, of the sort of tile area. Um, what are you doing at this moment? I cannot believe I'm this close to figuring out what this man is doing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I cannot get across. <laughs> so, the other thought I had is, as we've been walking over here, I'm going to kind of lift up the sort of long part of my tunic and I have been leaving a trail <laughs> for the others. So, I have seen Orba, and I, I think actually that Kaimi can do it too. There's like a little hand thing that they can make, and it can go over there, and it could grab the back. But what I don't want to do is, before they come here, die trying to get there. So what I would rather do is, as infuriating as this is, and believe me, I'm looking at the ceiling, I'm looking at the walls, I'm looking at, I mean, I, I can't, if we could fix it now, we would fix it now. But I think the thing is to wait for the magic hat. Do we know that they are behind? I mean, how far I'm gonna, behind I'm us gonna are turn they? around, Both like. give me perception checks. How much time do we have? I don't know. I have no idea. What, what, what's that bird? A uh, perception? 22. Well, 22. So Sphere's looking back, and you're sort of trying to see if anyone's coming along the course that you set with the piece of cloth. Ravi's keeping an eye on this area, making sure nothing suspicious is happening. As you're looking, and you guys are standing at the edge of this area, you see like a little turning of the latch of Shit, this door. Down. And I'm just going to kind of motion and... Both of you give me stealth checks. Oh, in the oh, middle of a fucking room. Oh, oh, with a boulder of, on the thing. <laughs> eight. 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 Yeah, 21. Bingo. 21. <laughs> The door opens up. Sophia is the is the first one to react. She she ducks like back in this direction. Oh, 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 no. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Billy. It's been fun. Uh, can you get that? I got it. I can. Oh, you guys got it. Yeah. Oh, look at this teamwork. Got it. Dexterous. That was one of the holes between the tiles. Like, How with her toes? Oh. I can get it. There we go. Hey. There I got it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, Robbie. <gasps> oh, God. As Robbie ducks back as quick as possible, you're trying to get into a good hiding spot and you kick a couple of small stones that just kind of no. across the tile. And coming out here is a little kobold. And as he peeks out, he, he's, it sounds like he kind of no, 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 hears no. a little bit of noise. As you're watching him, just kind of from your little hiding spot, he sort of has a suspicious face. I'm just face. kind of too Robbie if you can see me. <laughs> Almost like he feels just out of safety. He walks over here. Oh my gosh, okay. Oh shit. Oh, bitch. Oh, oh no. Bitch. All right, what is it now? Gonna collapse. Boulder. Oh yeah, the boulder. What happens mm -hmm. to the boulder? New symbol. Does he notice the boulder? He does not. As Did the he? thing turns, it clicks into place, and then there's a big groan. And the sound of a boulder, you hear like. No, no, no. no, no, no. And a big no, no, no. hole opens up in the ground. There. <laughs> and the, the kobold kind of. Oh no. Yeah, you did that, buddy. That was your fault. Yeah, you broke it. Tell your boss. <laughs> and it's about at this time, sort of hiding behind the rocks here, peeking over, that you hear some other footsteps. And Sophia looks in the direction of where she tore I'm the tunic. I'm put my hand pieces. on my bow just in case. Mm -hmm. And you see three shadows emerging from the fog in that direction. Not cobalt sized shadows. Uh, no. One kind of cobalt sized, <laughs> but two definitely okay. not cobalt sized. I'm going to pull my scimitars out. Raven! Kaimi! Can you hear me? Orba! I hope so. Yeah. Hi! Benji! We've... Fuck's sake, yeah! Come, 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 come! We've come. got a surprise Wait, for you guys! Why? We found your clothes! Orba's got a pile of clothes. 
Wait, what? Hi, Robbie. Erland. See, I'm gonna Jamie. give Erland a pat on the back when he... What happened to the other one? You all right? Yeah, I'm all right. What the fuck happened to Graven? Okay, so, um... Would you like to do it this time? Uh, his skin glowed, he passed out. What? He's okay, he's safe, he's hiding in a love dungeon thing. Um, what? what? It's a okay. love dungeon? We, we don't worry about temple. it. There's a temple that we hid Hang on, he, he passed out. What Apparently, do you mean? And his there. skin was glowing. How Is are he you sick? here right now? I fo- Well, we left a rather obvious trail. We did leave a trail. Uh, yes. I it worked. See, it I also heard that you set off a, well, likely you set off some sort of pit trap. Uh, uh yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's actually now that everybody's on, <laughs> on the general idea of how we all got here today, what are we doing? Oh. Do you need these? Uh, we need your hand, your magic hand. <laughs> you want your clothes back? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, thank you. Um, I'm gonna take that and kind of like shove them back in my bag. A number of strips of cloth. Yeah. And a shorter cloak. Um, so what's happening? It's okay. The lightest stitch. There's some sort of maze or puzzle to get across <gasps> puzzle. this. Are we like kind of cowering this, with them behind? Yeah, we're sort of at the other end there. Can Erlen sort of like poke his head up uh, over and just sort of see? Mm-hmm. Malik, the man I am chasing, he went through that doorway over there, but we cannot get there unless we safely cross this maze. I, we've discovered that if we follow these symbols, that we can get across, but the problem is, is half of the map is missing. So we can only at most get about five rows over there. As you can see, if you do it wrong, a big hole opens up in the ground, which is not ideal. But there's a bag so, <clears throat> behind that pillar, uh-huh. if you can see. Yeah. And we think it that the key the oh. that he was using to get across is in there. So, Great, so how do you know which symbol, which symbol is, is, the, is the good it one? It says on the thing, it says the... Um, you see what it it's hard to see, but when they point it out, you can make it out. It's it turns, it, that's and the that one? is the symbol that, that is the new to chase. Thing. So it's an axe-looking thing. So if oh, yeah. we yeah, trace yeah, this yeah, one, you can yeah. you can clearly what's go. Jump, what's your jump distance again? Uh, your strength score. If you if you have um, you don't have a running jump. If you don't have a running jump, it's half your strength score. Score, not modifier. So that little number that's underneath your strength. <laughs> yeah. What is the distance? Is it half five feet for all of these? Yeah, it's about five feet to, to jump to another yeah. one. Well, it looks like one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, wait, one, two, three, four, five, six. I don't know seven. if you can oh, count there's only on seven up? Like or is it? Like, no, there's no, it's, it's eight. eight. Oh, eight. oh, we just don't have any of the We don't have the eighth row. Is this time okay. sensitive? Is someone coming? Oh, well, we don't know, but we should treat it like it is. The other problem is that kobolds are all behind that door. And you think the other half of the map is over there? Yes. Uh, so we think it's over there. get close enough, you can do, do your. You still have your fall catching thing? Uh, no, but we have uh, our our hands. Yeah, it's, uh, it goes as far as thirty feet. So can you? Uh, yes. So yeah. So if if you and I got within thirty feet, and the bag might be heavy, I think we could use two hands. Yeah, I think I'm that's down. the best idea. I don't want anyone over the holes, even if we're you know falling slowly. Let's not fall at all, right? Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, and while we're planning this, I'm just gonna like be like, hey, just gonna do a little check-in, like <laughs> a little um, ping. Um, brother, Mr. Curse. Um, any. You seen this before? Is this jogging any memories? Hello. I know this place. The Hanas Theater. Manasami's largest public construction. It was used as a meeting hall or a place for governance, sometimes for play. There is something else important about it. The sheriff of the Ebb Woods. He who ordered the death of the caretaker. He had an office here. So, okay. So we all just sit silently when she tries to commune with the curse. Yeah, give her a second. Should I should I be trying to find the sheriff's office? Is that what your your invisible dead gut is telling you to do? Telling us me to do? It would be good to find it. Okay, um, any symbols that might point me there? There is a symbol above the sheriff's office, a small room. There is a star and a moon. That's kind of cute. Okay. Um, I'll look out for the star and the moon, and then when I step foot in there, you will totally magically remember who you were and how to get out of my head, right? Yes. Okay, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna push that. Uh, <laughs> I'm just gonna make an insight check. <laughs> oh, oh, I don't like that. Self. <laughs> oh no. Three. Yeah, no. Hard to hard to read whether that was confidence or or 
sort of messing with me. Yeah, <laughs> difficult to touch. Okay. Um, get a turn back to the group slowly. This was a theater. Okay. A a place of culture. Okay. Don't know how much that helps us getting across, but. No, you're telling me that patrons of the theater had to come in and jump through this maze. Maybe it's That's lower stakes than a... we think it is. Uh, no, the I construction don't think so. of the tiles in front of you look <laughs> like cobalt. Okay, I was gonna... that, that is since the ruins. <laughs> <of all. laughs> oh. <laughs> so the patrons are like, I can't wait to go. To... Up. <laughs> if you step on the wrong <laughs> space, <laughs> yeah, you, you get a different kind of production. <laughs> well, it's not great. Uh, anyway, I've got a little bit of a personal mission now to get to get. Going once we get inside there, so oh, I'm right. okay. So if you okay. two can use these symbols to get close, you can bring the satchel to us and we can finish the map. We did test it out. It is that is the right way, but don't yes. don't, don't so step on the if wrong you stone. Follow the axe yeah. looking symbols up to the fifth row. That should get you close enough that you can bring the satchel to you. Yes, and be ready with your thing. That um slows everything down. Please be ready with that, just in case. Yeah, okay. How many extra feet from the last row to the back? Uh, mm-hmm. 10, 15, a little more than 15, between 15 okay, so and 20 feet. Barely. barely. Okay. <laughs> would we feasibly be able to stand on one thing at a time together? Yes, but it would be difficult to like hop to a different one while you're both standing on it because there's like, you're like, you're like almost hugging each other if you're standing on the right. same How tile. much do you weigh? Can I put you on my back? Do I know? You could give her a piggyback. Like, be, again, it would be hard to hop between tiles. You'd have to go that. one at a time. Is there a problem? Well, if, uh, I think. why don't we both go, if, if one of us can stand on one of the rows, one back, if that's still a distance that we can manage, so that we don't, you know, uh, try to share the same tile and fall. Yeah, okay, may, may, maybe, maybe one hand, tile. one hand will be enough, and I'll be there for backup, I don't know. Okay, yeah. well, well, So you can't, can't. One is one. Can you pick that up? We've tried we picking know. things up before. It, it, there's a only a certain amount of strength that the hand has. My, it's the best fucking option. Okay, would you Let's like go. to go first or second? Um, I'll go first. Okay, go ahead. All right, All right please. Which be ones? Are we're gonna take. Yep. Yeah. Can we? Can you? May, can I take this? Yes. Okay. Great. I'll snatch that. I'll just follow you. Okay. Um. Let's Why don't there. you take a laser pointer there? Okay. Oh. Direct me across the. Uh... <laughs> Uh, gonna go over there. Please be careful. He sort of takes a deep breath and gives a little kind of hop. And it seems to like give just a little bit, but stays steady beneath your feet. All right. You look back and everyone's sort of. (laughs) Okay, and then I'm going to go over here. Great, great, great. It's going great. I'm not even going to look behind me. I'm just going to go right in front of me. Orb is going to quickly follow suit so she can remember which pattern Amelia is taking. I'm going to turn around, like, thumbs up. And you're going great. Okay, Um, and then I'm going to go to the next one. Right in front. Chill, vibes, vibing. Um, <laughs> going to go over there. Okay, and... I'm gonna turn around and just kind of like. This is as far as it goes. Oh, this is it. Yeah, Does this that is. Get you guys close enough. Much as the map is giving me. It is 30 feet away from you, can but I... it's around the pillar. You can just see like the edge of the bag there. Do you, may I? Really yep. Quickly? Okay. All right. So we're doing the axe. Mm-hmm. Remember the the circles with the X's in them mean. Very unstable terrain. <laughs> that seems to be as opposed to the rest of it, which is true, super solid. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Regardless of symbols. <laughs> <laughs> so, so like don't every step left, unstable. is what I'm saying. Yeah. But Amy, tell me if you think that this is true, but because there's nowhere to go from this one except that way, does it seem like that is at least a really, really good guess? Because it's not to the right and it's not up. It's not any of these other options. It's got to be that one, right? You're so smart. Oh, but please, 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 please do not guess. Please. We're not guessing. No, no guessing. Not guessing. No, this is no a logical guess. Everyone, guess. shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Just yelling. Sephira, um, very quiet. No guessing. I can't hear you. I really don't want them to guess. I'm just going to take a really deep breath and go no! over here. <laughs> 
<laughs> leaps a little bit. <laughs> Puzzle <Wow>. bitch. <laughs> Sorry. And okay. you can see now oh the sort of little piece of the satchel that's sticking out from behind the capstone. Oh, good, great. I'm going to go ahead and cast Mage Hand. And give it a little pull. It seems pretty light. Oh. You see it like uh, hers is invisible. She has sort of a sort of extra expertise with the mage hand. So the bag just kind of lifts up into the air, so and you watch Kimi pull it forward. Mm-hmm. Kimi, you are so cool. Thanks. <laughs> um, <laughs> should we back? Okay. Oh no, it's in, it's in the back. It's in the back. Okay. Yes. I'm gonna like slowly right. sit up. Over. Look into the bag. There's a, just a couple of things. It looks like there's some rations in there for uh-huh. him to eat as he was traveling. It looks like there's uh, an empty potion bottle in there. The cork are taken out that's already been used. There is a torn piece of paper. Oh, oh okay. there we go. Oh, okay. So okay. maybe memorize what that says and we can ferry it back to our friends once we have the, the right path. Oh, God. What? Um, It's just going to be a little bit more complicated than we wanted it to be. Oh, Why? No. <laughs> yeah. Um. Can I, what's my ability to memorize this, like, right now? I mean, you also have some, like, parchment in your bag. If you wanted to do a quick scribble of it, like, it would... Okay, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get everything out I need and just kind of, like, double the map. You mean, like, sort of squats on the ground with a (laughs) part piece? Oh, my God. Using my paints expertise here. Okay, and then I'll um, give the copy, since it's more, like, sturdy, and in one piece, I'm gonna pass it back. Hand back to Orvis. So you have to kind of, you have to go back a step because did you can, fall over? Well, can I just cast Mage Hand and like grab it from her? Sure. Holds it up. Daisy chain and some Mage Hands <laughs> together. <laughs> okay. Orvis takes okay, it with a Mage Hand into her possession. Um. Can I see? Yeah. Oh, that's what I was Mage Handing. Sorry. Yes, great. I'm gonna give you the, the copy of it. Yeah, can I see it? <laughs> oh. <laughs> You don't see the invisible map anymore. Are you sure? <laughs> Why does it get more complicated? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it really doesn't get more complicated. Yeah, it just gets longer. Okay. <laughs> I can't memorize that. <laughs> yeah. You just, you gotta backtrack at some point. Well, okay. Orb is gonna, you're, you're good, Kimi, to move forward? Yep. Hmm? Does that seem true? <laughs> I'm confident. Because we can just get everybody, like, we could just duck, duck, goose, not duck, duck, goose. Yep. Don't worry about that. Yep. We can just have everybody follow one stone at a time, so yep. we're all in one single line. Okay, great. Or we're gonna backtrack. <laughs> okay, we'll say you work your way back. Yeah. And you know there. Okay. One so step at a time. This is quite the long trail, actually, here, guys. So, what if we all just go one by one, following right after the other, like Amy and I just did, and we'll get over there. Okay. Okay. All right. Is there anything else we need to do before we all make this venture? But uh, no. Okay. Gird our loins. Great. Are you okay. moving as they're talking, okay. or are you all going to have to jump? I'm just going to wait for them. I'm just going to wait for them. Okay. Yeah. We go boop, 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 oh boop, God. boop. Yeah, we go yeah. backwards. Okay. okay. All right. Yes. Orb is going to lead the way. She's going to do the path that she just did with Kaimi. Okay. Do you have a laser pointer? Uh, yes. Okay. God. Christ. Okay. Uh, which way is Erlen's going to go right behind Orb. Okay. So the first one, we're doing the axe, right? Yeah. So the first guy in that little corner there, and then diagonal one. Behind and then I'm gonna go up two. Uh, Who's behind Erwin? Uh, I will pull this. Nice. Look at that. Okay. And then like, up like a game line. of snake. I guess <laughs> Orb is gonna mage hand this back to Kiimi. <laughs> Have fun, girl. <laughs> okay. And I'm gonna go diagonal uh, to the right one, to my right. Okay. So you, you, everyone's quiet, kind of, and the platforms just mm-hmm. teeter every so slight, ever so slightly. All right. Okay. Um. Here I go. Okay. This do one. do go ahead and show me the route rather okay. than do it one at a time. Um. We're going two this way, and then we're going diagonally up this way, and then over there, and then up one more, and then to that guy. One platform at a time, works her way through, and she can hear each time she hops, she looks back over her shoulder to see. (laughs) And like just one bounce at a time, everybody following along. You work your way finally to the other side. So the last person, as all of you are following. 
the last person, it's this one, right? Is that the last yep. one? Mm-hmm. That's right. Okay. So Robbie's on like the last step there, and he's about to sort of make his little hop, and you hear <laughs> As soon as I hear that, I'm gonna say, maybe. can I'm gonna motion to everyone to get behind the door yeah. to see if we can't get behind <laughs> the door as they do that. Where's the bag right now? Uh, in I have Kiyomi's it. possession. Um, can I try and grab the bag from Kimi? You see him reaching for it. Why? What? What? Do you let him have it? No. Okay. He doesn't <laughs> let you have it. I'm gonna try and pull it away. I'm just, do, I, do, do I get it? Uh, oh, make I an athletics check <laughs> against both of you. <laughs> <laughs> do I? Do I get you, it? You <laughs> make it last yeah. Just yeah. looks at Matt hopefully. Oh no! <laughs> no! Dirty twenty. No, that's you, not twenty. Oh, it's a nat twenty. She sees you reaching for it <laughs> and immediately nat tw- yanks it away. Yep. <laughs> Do and I, you look uh, worse. <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna what, what was slide your behind that. Do I have time to put feathers? Do I? Can I strap something around my head and put feathers? Give me a straight dexterity check. D20 oh plus God. your dexterity to do it as quickly as you dexterity. possibly can. Oh, we should have done that earlier. From? He had them from the pit. Them. He took That's them out of the pit trap. 16. So I add these two numbers together. Yep. Yes. 28. 20. 28. Wait. Oh, with advantage, you said. You were, I don't think that should you matter. You just rolled a 12 sorry. plus, oh no, sorry, the, oh, the Yeah, top. sorry, the, the oh, modifier. Oh, my bad, 15. 15, right? I was like, <laughs> don't they? <laughs> you were like <laughs> 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 You do it pretty quickly anyway. It means, so you're doing this as you're hopping from the other thing. You reach into your pocket because you can hear the door opening and you're worried. And the door opens up and you're moving in the direction of where everyone's sort of crouched behind the door, but you're visible still and the cobalt <laughs> kind of comes out and you had just placed it on top of your head. <laughs> Probably confusing. <laughs> oh my! Oh no! The emotions inside. I. <laughs> he doesn't get patted down. <laughs> I stare at the cobalt. <laughs> I step slowly towards the door. And since I'm the only one with these black feathers, and if these guys try to get into the door without them, they probably won't get in, I gently suggest that they follow me with their weapons <laughs> drawn. Hard to see exactly what he's indicating at that moment. What are you, yeah, what are you, yeah, what are you, what are you doing? doing? You start to motion with your hands. <laughs> oh. Sazzle. Uh, and I step to the door. Step to the oh door. my god! Can I, while he's doing that, what is the like latching system on yeah. this door? Can you see how it like connects to the wall based on the like? Yeah, it's like an iron hinge. What do you Can mean? I... Uh, sorry, not that side of it. Not the hingey part. The closey part. Like, uh, is there like a chink or like a? Yeah, there's like a <laughs> bolt lock on the other side. If that's what you mean. Yes. Like, yeah, to close it, just like a metal bolt. Can that I? Down. As he's closing the door, mm-hmm. he's I literally wanna, doing. I'm gonna try and like stay with the door as it's closing. I have a block of incense. And okay. I'm gonna try and slide it on the ground, like not slide it, but like put it on the ground like a door stop, so the door can't fully close. Okay, give me a dexterity check. This is with disadvantage. You are exhausted, remember? Yeah, I can't do fucking anything. Oh my god, what did you do? What have you done? Are you serious? You roll the block, and just it looks like it's rolling right oh. for where the door is about to shut, oh and at the god. last moment, it hits a bump in the rock oh. and just rolls away. Oh, Door closed. Sorry, I didn't want them to know that the bag wasn't um, there. Oh. Um, uh, what the hang, hang on, hang on, hang on. That's a Gonna go pick up the stupid block of incense. Um, 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 Why did he just put feathers on his head and go um, inside? Do we have feathers? Do we have feathers? I was just about to say. Feathers. And can I <laughs> anywhere around this area? In this bit, this is like a man made courtyard. There's no, definitely no, there's no animals Meaning, here. We're not gonna find feathers, which means why do we need feathers? Because I don't know, but what we saw when we saw Malik is we saw him have that piece of paper. Uh huh. He jumped across the stones. He straightened himself up before he decided to knock on the door when he had those feathers and made oh, sure. Oh, Malik that was wearing were, feathers. Yeah, he was wearing feathers too. That's why Ravi knew to put them on. Are there feathers in his bag? We have his bag. Uh, uh check. There were no extra feathers. God damn. <laughs> anyway, he straightened himself up. Looks like he had a moment of second thought or something, or that he was, I don't know, gathering himself, and then knocked on the door, two cobalts with spears, came out, poked them right at his chest, saw the feathers, thought, uh, I don't know, I guess that's our cobalt king or whatever the fuck that means, patted him down like they were doing a, you know, 
a check for something? I don't know what they were looking for on them. And what's weird is okay. they didn't do the same Who thing to Who is Ravi. this person that Ravi is tracking? That might it's catch some, me up quickly. It's some kind of city official that he needs to interrogate I for some assassination. I don't think it will. I actually think it'll make things much more convoluted. He was the assistant to the vermin control guy. Which Guys, tried can to, Earl just to try the, the door? <laughs> <laughs> it's Ravi, definitely locked. Ravi, it, even, it even rattles a little bit. Like, if you pull too hard, it's not like so solid that it doesn't okay. rattle a little bit. Can, if we knock again, they clearly just open the door. I know that they're armed, but if we just bombard them, there's four of us. Would my charm person work on a reptile? Kobolds are humanoids, that would work. Uh, it would, can you do more than one in that. case there's multiple of them? Yeah. I believe if you upcast it, so if, uh, it's it's level one, right? Yeah. yeah. So if you cast it at level two, you can target two creatures with it. Am I allowed? Do you, you have level two spell slots, I think. Yeah, on your sheet there. Or do you only have level one? I only have level yeah, one. so you can only target one. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So people who have higher level spells can can cast at a higher okay. level. Okay. Perhaps we knock and ambush them. Um, we can charm one and physically fight the rest. I mean, here's you have the problem. Charm, just to clarify, charm person's not mind control. So if you charmed one and then started beating up their ally, they would start fighting you. <laughs> they, they, yeah, they they do defend their their like, uh, allies. I, I think the. the the problem that I'm worried about is it seems like they have a ripe kingdom of some sort down here, and those two were clearly organized and clearly reporting to someone else. So us stepping in here is literally stepping into, I mean, the bear cave. Okay, How so important is Ravi to us? Well, I'm not going to abandon this person. I need to yeah, get in there. Uh, yeah, she also needs to get uh, in. Right. First of all, definitely not leaving him, just literally to die. <laughs> Sorry, Billy, not looking at him. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't want to influence you. <laughs> so. He can still hear you. He's on the other side of the door. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not Charlie, cool, guys. Charlie Brown's away. <laughs> people do. Uh, my attacks mostly make noise. I can try and silence him quickly. I mean, my. Arrows usually make kind of a mushing sound. Like at the broken that's... crown, I can try and silence him quickly. Understood. I think that's I don't. Does do anyone have that. a healing potion or some some roots? Some oh, you uh, I know. I feel like shit. Yeah, you look like right. Shit. I'm also like covered in like dirt and yeah. Dust. He looks like he's been traveling sort of without sort of stopping for some time now. There's dirt and shit. Uh, yeah, give me. I'm looking in my bag. I believe I gave you one before. The... Yeah, you did. I'm yeah. just looking for it. Okay. Um. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, I have a healing kit. Yeah, you gave me one. Yeah, I gave you a, Oh, you, you, I, I believe you ingested yours. Um, oh. Make a count. Or, or she hands over one of her last healing potions. Every HP is out. Make a count. 2d4 plus 2. Can we get him a coffee so you can <laughs> shake the exhaustion? Oh, no, that was drunkenness, right? Wow. Okay. Four plus what? Two, so six. Okay. Oh yes. my god, we have... That's the average, I rolled the average. Oh, oh that's what we're shooting for now? <laughs> Fuck, I've rolled two net ones already, so yes. <laughs> average sounds nice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think we've got to go in there, but I suppose, I mean, I think we should expect to be bombarded. So can you be you know, on the front lines of this, or are you not going to make it? For this first you one. Look, frankly, for this, thank you, for this first one, let's see how I do. Positioning yourselves kind of around. The I'm door. going. Uh, you stay hidden, so perhaps you get uh, the element of surprise. Just stay behind the door. Just an attack. all of us. Yes, all three of you. See oh. him like from behind the door. Oh. There's also this sort of you know wheel thing that's over there. Someone could. Some, crash some of you perhaps hide there, and I'll knock and pretend I'm, I'm coming in, and the then I will hopefully thing. strike him in a way Can that I kind of crouch behind him. the wheel thing so that I and have a okay, I'm gonna sort of bow. Knock. Have my dagger, I guess. Oh yeah. Everyone kind of getting over here? Yes. <laughs> okay. Or, oh, Kaimi, maybe if you want to hide, like, up against the wall by the opening of the door, okay. like, as soon as it opens, you can hug the wall. Does right. that make sense? Got you. Because you got the stabbies? Mm hmm. Um, and I'm going to go over there and, like, hide. Okay. Crouch down. Um, give me a perception check as well as you okay. over here. Same with Sephira. Who's over here, too? Okay. Ooh, dirty 20. Dirty. Nice. Five. As Kimi circles around the capstan and then Orba gives her the idea to kind of wait by the door, you're walking like just along the wall to keep yourself kind of up against it. So if someone comes out, you have sort of the element of surprise a little bit. And as you're moving along that wall, sort of right, 
Oh, I lost my laser pointer. Can I have that back? <laughs> <laughs> right sort of here in the corner a little bit. Um, sort of up here in the corner, you see one of those kobold symbols that's been like scratched into the stone there. Mm-hmm. It looks like three parallel lines, horizontal okay. parallel lines, oh. and the middle one's a little bigger than the other two. <gasps> I'm just gonna look at them and just like. And Erlen's like about <laughs> to knock on the door. <laughs> and can I just. <sighs> what? Hidden passage. What? The curse? Nope. Even symbols, knowledge. Um, and I'm just gonna like be like putting my hands up on the wall, like feeling for anything. Yeah, investigation check. <laughs> you make it with advantage, you know it's there. So. Okay, so it's rolled twice. Yep. Uh, 17. Oh, no, oh, 19, 19. 19. You sort of oh, run your hand oh. along the wall, and just at one point, you're not even kind of intentionally, but you place a little bit of pressure in, and it looks like if you pushed that one of the stones here would kind of open up into the interior. Okay. This looks like an infinitely better option. Can I, I'm gonna go in first. And can I kind of crouch <laughs> down and like, with my bow kind of not <laughs> like sneak in. <laughs> so you're gonna, you're gonna be the first one through. So you push it open and there's like a little passageway and it looks like it turns to the right and then goes up. Like there's, it like ramps up to the right immediately after you go in through the wall here. So Vera's the first one through. All right, step your way through, give me a stealth check. Uh, uh, that's 17. 17, okay. Step your way in. And again, the ground here is sort of a mixture of rock and rubble, so there's a little bit of like crunching beneath your feet. But immediately, as you get up to the ramp, it looks like it was cut into the stone, so it's actually quite smooth. So you get to that part, and it's much quieter, and you kind of slowly shuffle your way up. This tunnel was clearly made for a kobold, yeah. not a. So <laughs> you're hunched, and your back is sort of pressing against the wall, and you're, you have your hands on the other side, so you're almost like doing yeah. this sort of sliding your way further up and in. And it sounds like you can hear some on the interior, so just some kobold noises. Okay, not in the tunnel, but like. No, no, no. Okay, I was like. Coming from wherever you're headed to okay. in general. Yeah. And as you get a little further and further and you're sort of listening for maybe any sounds of kobolds or Ravi, that's what we're gonna say. Oh, 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 I knew it. I knew oh. it. The raven's feathers, you just went Ooh. for it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> He's only got two episodes. I two in the game. Game. <laughs> He saw that door open and he was like, <laughs> <laughs> Show him in there. Uh, yeah, you don't really have a headband, so maybe you took your belt off or something yeah. really quick. And just, how long is his hair? Can you like? Oh, that <laughs> just, well, yeah. Don't you have poofy hair? That just would take too long <laughs> braiding it. <into> his <laughs> that is where we're going to that take really our break. <laughs> yeah. As we figure out edge. what's Notes. inside uh, this this abandoned theater of old, and maybe figure out a little bit about. Amy's curse. Oh. Does the sheriff have an office in the theater? So again, it's not just like, it's like a, a like a meeting. just for performances. It's also like a meeting hall, like for governance, oh. like for like there's people have meetings here. It's multi-purpose. So. It's it's not weird that the sheriff has a thing here. Yeah. He's not like a dedicated thespian. <laughs> he has his own room. In oh the no, he's there to be hey. or not. His job's a sheriff, but who he yeah. is. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, awesome. That's where we're gonna pick it back up, and we'll see maybe if uh, we figure out what Malik's been up to in here now. Let's that, hope oh that it's a Robbie doesn't just die. <laughs> we're like, you're not the real king. Oh my god! And as always, they I'm bring him in. He's like, I got the guy. Neither is like, Malik. No, we already <laughs> have the guy. guy. Just Tim and Malik doing the Spider Man. <laughs> stupid. Uh, I'll do the thank yous for subs and stuff yes. uh, after the break. So thank you all very, very much. All right, everybody. We'll see you on the other side. Oh. Hello. Oh, just Sorry, oh. I haven't seen the timer <laughs> started over. Uh, <laughs> what a late break. Too much fun. Um, Too much. Welcome back, everybody, to chapter 12 of season two. Peek beneath the veil. Oh my goodness. We're going to be diving right back in. Ravi has taken the lead and and taken us into the kobold den. <laughs> but, as always before, a I might few be things like to say. Yeah. Some things, but I want to make sure that it has been said. Mm-hmm. Mr. Jingle Limer has given away 11,000 bits. Hopeful Optimus oh. has given away seven. Crazy Locha gave away 11 community subs. Oh Ren Rev did 100 bits. You have Power did 100 bits. Dual, I can't read this. Dooladins, Dooladins, did I say that right? I, I can't read my handwriting. handwriting. <laughs> I was writing it very quickly. Uh, did a sub <laughs> to the Maxwell resub. Oh, Platitudinous Platypus <laughs> did a sub. And then Keeper, it's right here. I have it. Keeper Tay uh, gave out a community sub, and then Jeremiah also just gave out a community sub. Thank you all so, so very much. Thank you, guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Crazy. 
It is crazy. Crazy. Or crazy locha. Silly <clears throat> honest. Or Ooh. crazy locha. <laughs> so locha. Point the That's so locha. Oh. That's so locha. Don't you dare. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Get out. <laughs> we'll leave. Ravi is ushered inside. Ooh. Oh. He's not quite pointing the spear at you, but you can tell he's almost like hovering just behind you. Make sure no false moves or anything that seems suspicious on your end. Any bit of echoing that was present on the outside, it's amplified tenfold in here. You let your eyes adjust to the dimming of the light and you find yourself in a kind of large foyer, perhaps like a greeting hall or a, an area for consorting before you pass into the main part of the building. It's very long and rectangular, but other than the blocks of debris littering the floor, it looks entirely empty. The ceilings are very high, and there's a second floor balcony that looks like it goes all the way around the perimeter. It is sort of crumbling in a few places, so it leaves some gaps. So there's just like a big open space on the lower floor, and then a balcony running all the way around the perimeter on the second floor. Once or twice, you think that you see a little flicker of red, like the, like some pointed ears or the tip of a tail. It looks like there might be kobolds up on that balcony that might sort of be just keeping an eye or listening as you walk through. And your footsteps seem rather loud in here, kind of clunk, 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 as you walk through this big open space. It looks like you're being led straight across to the opposite wall where there's another restored and reinforced door. Again, looking newer. It doesn't look like it's sort of a from the ruin. It looks like the kobolds have constructed it. it. Has kind of a mixture of metal and wood, and it's a bit of a slipshod appearance there of their of their craftsmanship. So, you're being walked through this little thing. He, ha he doesn't say anything. You can hear him kind of breathing just behind you. And you continue to walk forward. Anything you're doing during this time? Uh, I'm just gonna have to walk towards the store so there are kobolds above. It, they're not like standing watching, but you saw like a little tail, a little ear, so it seems like there are some up above. You just don't know exactly how we're surrounded. I'm going to stop for a moment and see what my little friend does behind me. <laughs> and he kind of, not with the tip, but he just <clears throat> gives you a little push. <laughs> I keep moving forward. <laughs> oh. Walks behind you. You get to the door on the other side. So at about the time that you get to the door on the other side, we're going to swing around. Oh, shit. So this narrow tunnel turns to the right and then it immediately ascends. A little ramp sort of carved into the rock, clearly meant to be accessible to generally smaller creatures. So you have to kind of crawl your <laughs> okay. way. Not crawling, but you're hunched. Yeah. Get it. It's just a very short trip up to what feels like about one story's worth of height. And you emerge on a balcony overlooking a very large, empty room. I immediately want to check to see if I am visible to any Yeah, one. give me a perception check. <laughs> it seems, oh my god, nine. Nine. As, as soon as you get up, you can kind of, there's some cracks in the balcony that you can see down below, and at this point, you can see Ravi and the kobold at the far opposite wall on the lower level. Okay. And in addition to that, just like Ravi did, it's hard to spot exactly where they are, but on this balcony, you see like And this red balcony tail. is connected? It's, yeah, I, one I, big balcony that circles all the way around the room. And if I look up, is there any, There are. this is the only balcony, or are yeah, there levels? Yeah, it's just, nope, it? just the one balcony. There's a roof above you, it's cracked. There's like some, a little rays of sunshine peeking through. But okay, and do I see on the balcony, can I see any other kobolds or hear any other movies? Uh, again, you saw like a tail. Ears, okay, okay. like little flicks of red, okay. nothing definitive, but you see. I'm gonna kind of step out onto the balcony then, like, and scoot over a little bit. Sure. And then I wanna, is there any railing on this balcony? Yeah, so it, it it's like a fully stone, so it's flat, and then there's like a stone railing, so it's not like visible Great. unless you peek your head Perfect. over, but there are cracks. Then you know, what I wanna do oh. immediately is duck down okay. so that I'm in, I'm, so I'm hidden behind the stone railing. Sure. Um, and then I want to kind of, if I can reach my hand into the entrance of the hole, sure. I'm going to kind of reach my hand in and like... Beckon a little bit? Beckon a little bit like this. Who was behind Saphir there? Who was next to uh, her? Kaimi was next one through? Okay. And then as soon as they get up, I mean, Kaimi actually might be sort of short enough that she doesn't have to do much, but I'm going to kind of... She motions to you. Okay. So who, is we everyone coming up at the we should stay under this balcony. I'm gonna scoot over. You tell the next person to stay low, okay? okay. 
So I'm going to kind of very slowly and quietly try to scoot over so I make room for everyone. Gimi comes out. Who's coming out next? Oh, okay. Orba comes out next. She sees Gimi. Stay low. Got it. And then I'll motion. So the four of you get out onto this sort of balcony, and by the time all four of you reach and are sort of crouched down behind the, the stone railing, you hear and the door opens, and do you walk through? He sort of motions. Yes. So you hear the opening of the door, and then the can I the take a tiny piece of my tunic again? To try, I mean, I want to try to let him know that we're here. Free rip. And I want to try to sort of like over the railing, just drop a little piece as he's walking by. Uh, he has already, down. he's on the all passed. the opposite way. Yeah, because he went in before oh, you. So, so he I got all the way that. to the other side. Of the, I mean, you can, it's just he won't see that. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> 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 if he could see, I would have. Start oh, you. <laughs> no, no. 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 You drop no. <laughs> Get it out. Yes, he has already been. Okay. Will side. this into existence? <laughs> <laughs> I ship it. Do I see any star, moon type mm. symbols? Give me a perception check. All right. Sixteen. Nice. Sixteen. You look along the balcony, and it looks like, in addition to the balcony itself. There's little like offshoot rooms, not going into the interior, but to the outside portion. Like it looks like maybe for when this was at one time a very distinguished sort of meeting hall or theater, there's like little VIP rooms. Like you can peek in and it, it's, you know, decrepit at this point, but there's like a little seating area in each of these rooms. So if someone was waiting for a meeting to start or a production to begin, they would get this nice little kind of exclusive area. And there's several of these. So you look down the aisle, one off, Another one off, another one off. And it looks like the last one down the row on your left, there's a little carved, engraved symbol above the door. It's a little like a star and a moon. It's kind of weathered with time, but it looks similar to that. Um, that door, all the way down there on, on the left, I gotta get over there. Um, okay. You guys, I don't know, can do what you need. Maybe you can follow, you know, Ravi or anything, but I'm gonna go over there. If anyone wants to come with me, just in case I collapse the no. second I step foot in there. Numbers, numbers, many numbers. Yeah, okay, so what if, can you guys maybe go to the far side and see if there's another doorway or a symbol that would lead to where Ravi's being taken to next? And then I'll just assist Kaimi in case, and we can catch up to you quickly. I think we should, we have to walk alongside anyways. We should just walk together and Safir and I can continue on. Okay, right. okay. If we're walking, we're gonna have to be slow and careful because the kobolds are here yes. on the balcony. Yes. Yeah? Okay. You guys have decent cover here. Everybody give me stealth checks with advantage. Erlen's just a straight roll. What am I doing? One, so thank goodness. Stealth with advantage. Ooh, <laughs> <laughs> Reroll. 23. 24. 25. Oh, thank wow. God, you guys. <laughs> Eena, a 10. <laughs> Orbis almost falls off the balcony. Yeah. <laughs> you guys, everyone <laughs> over her back. Okay, <laughs> quietly. So you guys, everyone with their kind of backs down, moving very slowly along the perimeter of the balcony there. You pass by one of those little sitting rooms, another one of the sitting rooms. You peek in, ravage, like broken furniture, broken stone, sort of uh, one, one almost looks like a hole leading down below, like it's completely collapsed in. So a number of them are completely destroyed or out of commission. And you finally get closer and closer to the far end. So the last one on the left is the one that has the symbol. And then what are, uh, Severe and Erlen were looking for something else? We're we going, going, so it's, it's about, it. you're about to like turn the corner or something. Oh, I thought it was a circle. It's yeah, a, it's, it's, a, a it's a rectangle. Oh. Um, so get to the back <laughs> left corner. So we're gonna get then to sort of the corner and yep. Erlen wants to sort of. Or something. Yeah. <laughs> Erlen wants, <laughs> for, uh, gonna like give it a corner check. Sure, give me a perception check. With this veil. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> My second. <laughs> sure we six, can. six. So as you peek your head around, you it does look like there is a kobold patrolling that side of the rectangle. He's kind of sort of he peeks over the side at one moment, and then comes back. He's not sort of walking in your direction. He's currently walking in the other direction, okay. but there is one moving along there. So if you were to turn the corner, you'd be in sight. One, one kobold. 
How far away is he right now? Um, probably like 20, 30 feet right now. I'm going to... Yes. <laughs> going to very quietly <laughs> give me a stealth check this is vanish Jesus Jesus oh, oh, five twice okay. 11 11 okay respectable for disadvantage pretty quiet <sighs> moving along you're trying to get all the way up to the kobold so as he's moving in the opposite direction I want to attack immediately he turns before you get all the way up to him sort of he hears just kind of at the last moment <laughs> And what are you doing? Nunchaku attack. Great. Give me the attack roll. Um, it would be, have been with advantage if you got all the way up to him, but just a straight roll. Now it's straight, though. So yep. yeah. Let me get to my. Let me get to my combat section. Um, fifteen to hit. Fifteen hits. Roll for damage. Uh, non-lethal, please. Okay. Uh, seven bludgeoning damage, <laughs> and I would love it, Matthew. Mm-hmm. <laughs> If he made a constitution saving throw. <laughs> yes, let's do that. Yeah, what's this guy's constitution like? Probably not great, right? We little friends. Find a d20. Oh, do you see pictures of them? They're jacked. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they are, they're all strong little friends. Eight. That fails. Mm-hmm. He is, that's stunning. Loser. Right. <laughs> um, and Erlen's going to take this moment to uh, another non lethal non That uh, was seven on the first one, I think. Seven damage? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, advantage, yes. Or uh, yeah. straight. No, it's no attack rolls are he does not have disadvantage on. Uh, oh, right. so seventeen to hit. That hits. Again, non lethal. Uh, nine bludgeoning. Okay, that go. is going to knock him out. There we go. Um, we are doing our nine Yes, no we are. Um, <laughs> never mind. It's just so, not fucking working. Yes, let me make sure we have the right rolls. Sure he has to walk me through it every time. <laughs> Yeah, so we have sort of special non-lethal rolls for uh, making it a little more difficult. You need to roll, um, so the spillover damage was uh, five. So the difficulty is 13 or higher. I think it was eight plus. So you just roll straight d20 and you need to roll a 13 or better. No. Nine. 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 Good night. Is there a side room I could take him into? Uh, yeah, in there's hall? there's other of those rooms. I'm gonna quietly hide him. Let's hide him okay. as quietly as possible. Start to try to hide him in one of the side rooms. Start to do so during this time. You've gotten up to that room that has the symbols. It has again, kind of. It has a door, but it's you know it's okay. pretty shoddy at this point. All right. Moment of truth. I'm gonna just look over at Orba, um, and then look back at the door. I'm gonna put my hand on whatever resembles a door handle that's left yes. there. This is it. We step across the threshold here alone. Tell your companions to wait. Well, I'm, I'm never alone when I'm with you, right, buddy? Yes. Okay. Um, wait here for just a second. I think I have to do this on my own. I'll scream or something if I need help. Okay. I, what's the worst that could happen? Uh, Ghosts, demons, zombie priestesses? We're gonna be fine. Okay, I just wait that side then. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Deep breath. Open the door. And inside. Ooh. As you step into the office, you wait for something. A rush of intensity, a, a flood of memories, a flash of light from a spiritual beacon. Something to signify that you've been successfully transporting this disembodied voice all this way. But nothing happens. There is no fanfare. Typical. The room itself is nothing. Crumbling stone walls, rotting wood, remnants of some furniture splintered into pieces. And if you hadn't been told by the voice that this office belonged to the Sheriff of the Ebwoods, it would barely register at all as something more than the half dozen sitting rooms that you already passed by on your way here. The cold and void of light. But the disappointment of the nothingness sets in, and so too does a realization that this nothingness extends now to the quiet corners of your mind. Your thoughts feel entirely your own, and that itching, that scratching, occupied sensation is lifted. 
though you do know all too well at this point to temper your excitement, for the feeling often doesn't last. You wait a moment. And then you flinch as you hear the voice <laughs> of Mr. Curse come through. But this time, there's something different about it. Instead of a telepathic link directly to your brain, it sounds as if the voice is in this room. Yes, yes, yes. Audible, like any other voice. And you turn to see a faded green outline of a spectral human man. And he's running his hand along one of the nearby walls. He has shaggy shoulder length hair, and he has a bicocket sort of a pointed hat and a frilled vest and a cloak slung off of his left shoulder. He almost has like a, a bard or a minstrel-like appearance. <laughs> and you've never seen a bard with such a sort of deep, far off stare of sadness on their face. He's sort of moving his hand along the wall. He touches one of the splintered pieces of furniture. This is where it happened. This is where the sheriff gave the order that the caretaker was to die. And his voice shifts in sort of its quality. But this is not my office. The husband and wife, they had a child. A child that they did not wish to raise in the seat of their shame. The people of Manasami called them many things. Murderers for getting the boy killed. Traitors for failing to report the necromancy. And at the very least, criminals. Difficult label to shed when you've spent time in prison. They left the Edwards to raise their son. And in doing so, they avoided the catastrophe when Manasami collapsed. They lived. But as I'm sure you can imagine, this only added to their guilt. Their disgrace. They decided never to speak of it not even to their son. A lost story buried away. But what child for a time does not wish to do and be the opposite of their parents? For all their solemnity and silence, I was bright and full of words. I was a musician. I wanted to travel to write songs of far-off lands, great mysteries, great heartbreak. I heard of a place called Manasami. What a great tragedy to have taken place there. It was said that most were too scared to venture into the woods, which only made me want to go more. But when I arrived, a feeling came over me, as if the city itself sensed me, as if it were lying dormant, waiting to strike. Of course, it was my parents that the spirits of the ruin were searching for, but their blood ran through me. And since they had fled, it was I who was burdened, paying for the sins of others. Sins born of ignorance, not of malice. He walks across the room, kind of to the other side. He goes to where it looks like it's completely destroyed at this point. There's a pile of sort of rectangular shaped wood, almost like it was a desk at one point. And as he reaches out his hand, it doesn't reform itself, but it's sort of a green spectral desk appears. So as he touches it, sort of this memory, this echo of the desk reappears and he's able to physically reach out and touch it. They burdened me with the suffering of all those that die. The horror of it, the helplessness. They gave me that burden, and they sent me home. And as the madness ate away at me, I did the only thing that I thought I could. I struck my parents down. For they deserved it. They'd never been punished for their sins, and so it fell to me. I was filled with the people of Manasami's hate and their agony, and that is where it left me. He reaches towards the desk and opens a green spectral drawer, and he reaches in, and he takes out a green spectral piece of paper, as if, once again, sort of an echo of a time past. 
This letter here. This is the one that my parents wrote that was intercepted by the sheriff. I can read it. I can, I can see the fear and the conflicting emotion in their handwriting. Such a little thing to cause the loss of so many lives. But see, I think if you look at it, you will see something different. I think you will see the nature of your curse. And he holds out the green spectral paper to you. I'm going to just kind of reach out, and when I put my fingers through it, does it become physical in my hand? It feels physical, and as soon as you you have it in one your fingers, he lets go of it with his fingers, and it turns from green to parchment, to physical parchment that you can hold in your hands. <clears throat> okay. I'm just going to keep my eyes on him um, until I have to look down at the paper. The important thing to know for you is that this letter was intercepted by Elatrian scouts on its way to Navikapura. And just as my parents' letter was, it was seen by the wrong eyes. You look down at the letter. Whoa. And you begin to read it. And immediately as you look at this piece of paper, the handwriting is familiar to you. Looks like your parents' handwriting. Looks like your father's handwriting specifically. It says Colette and Lorelei. It's addressed to Colette and Lorelei. I hope that your relocation to Navikapura is going swimmingly. Dillasoon isn't the same without you. As days go by, it feels more and more like you made the right decision. Getting our feet under us in the city is no small task. Somehow it's as if we have less of a place after the war than we did before it. So the letter seems to be written very much in the recent sort of aftermath of the War of Giants. We hear that they're gathering a committee to meet with the Elatrian elves of Lantharipu. A fool's errand, no doubt. A community of displaced halflings who spent much of their lives oppressed by imperi imperial sympathizing elves. And this is their plan for reformation? Trusting more elves? Here's what we think the committee should do. Attend the meeting. Cut off the head of every Elatrian that attends. Pick a part of the thicket that we like and line the perimeter with our trophies of war. Stop asking permission. Everybody else takes what they want. Why not us? We know, we know. Harsh measures. But isn't anyone else tired of all this negotiating? It's selfish, but it would be awfully nice to have a real home before L Nalani gives birth. We don't want to be catching rats here forever. My apologies for our rambling. Right back soon, and hopefully we'll find a time to take a trip east. Or maybe you can come visit us at our new place when we take Lantharipu from the Elatrians. We miss you dearly. Until next we meet. Nalani and Kekoa Crow. What? Do you understand? Maybe. <laughs> written in jest or not, it was this letter, written by your parents, that led to the halfling massacre in Trixta's thicket. They went to the meeting and the Elatrians, believing it to be an ambush, killed them. Your parents know this, but they hide from their shame in the city of Dillasun. Why do you think they wanted so badly to keep you close, to not have you travel as a searcher? Did you, when did this come back to you? Was it, was it when I stepped through the door or? And what am I supposed to do about this? When you stepped foot in Bezafir, into the crypts, you were given a curse, yes. But not an elven one. A halfling one. Now that I have remembered my history, when you leave the ruins of Manasami, you will be burdened with the suffering of those halflings that were slaughtered in Trickster's Thicket. Their hate, their agony. You will return home, and you will have to decide 
what to do, whether to make them pay or to forgive. Well, you made them pay? Yes. Did that make you feel better? No. And, 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 and what happened to you after that? You just, you died a peaceful death? I lived for a time. <laughs> I would find myself wondering if I did the right thing over and over. It did seem that after I struck them down that the curse was lifted. I am not sure I would have been given that peace if I had not. So what are you prepared to live with? Oh boy. Well, once I step foot out of this room, possible burning, searing pain of a genocide, <clears throat> are you gonna d disappear? I will follow you back to Dilla soon. I await to see what your decision is. And when you say follow, do you mean in my head as itchy scratchy voice or outside as scary <laughs> green musician? <laughs> <laughs> when you pass beyond the threshold of this door, I believe it will be as it was before, at least until you get back and make your ultimate decision. All right. But don't try to influence me one way or the other. This is going to be my decision. Yes. It will be. Well, it was nice seeing you in real life. Do you think I could give you like a hug or like, do you want to like air hug or? <laughs> How about a curse high five? Let's do it, dude. You just feel a touch. It it doesn't Stop. fully connect. Your hand passes like a little through, but you can feel a little bit of the pressure in the opposite direction. Well, I am a little freaked out that you murdered your parents. I understand what brought us together, and I don't really like it, but history is important. And it's important that we know these things and that we try to right the wrongs. And whatever happens when I get back to my parents, I'm gonna tell the truth about what happened and I'm gonna keep telling people what the Elatrians did and, and that's what's really important, right? Yes. You will tell of what the Elatrians did, but the question is, will you tell of what your parents did? When I look into their eyes, I'm going to know what's right. Yes. That is exactly what I believe. I have one more place I would like to visit in Manasami. The cemetery. I'd like to pay my respects to the caretaker. I'd like you to go. It is a dangerous place because of the undead spirits there, but I can protect you from them. I think it's important for us to hear him, for it was his death, the first, that led to so many others. Finish your business with your companions, and then I will lead you to the cemetery. All right, friends first, scary undead field trip later. And I am going to, with the last deep breath of a clear head, enjoy this last moment of freedom, Aww. and then turn around and step back out of the office. Pass back through that threshold of the door, and immediately, just almost like cupping your ears, you just feel that sort of stuffy sensation back in your head. And the first face you see is Orba's as you uh, duck back out. The door. Oof. <laughs> Honestly, I'll catch you up later. Big deal. Uh, lots to think about. Voice not gone. Solution possibly found. 
I would love to distract myself a little longer from what lies ahead for me. So let's, you know, find that lodestone or whatever. Got it. Okay. Um, <laughs> while you were in there, um, I had this realization that I'm not entirely sure it would work, but if I tried maybe speaking to whoever this person is, I, I, I have a special connection between life and death, mm-hmm. I think. I don't know if... But if he has another plan for you, then that's just <laughs> the way he might. If he has a solution, um, I'm sure he knows better than I. I don't know how... He's like, he kind of freaked me out a little bit. Um, oh. Just passed around, but... Sure, why not? See if you can coax him out of here, because I did experience him outside of my head when I was in there, and it was oh. kind of nice. So if you could bring him back out for my trip back home, that would be kind of fun. <laughs> you want to just... Right now? Yeah, you want to just lean over oh, to my put, ear? Put just... me on the spot, huh? Okay. Oh, oh gosh, okay. Um, or was going to take a look around. Um, let's say that while she was waiting, actually, she's taking like a little bit of the dirt and a little bit of the rubble, and she's trying to just messy her hands a little bit in it. Okay. Um, her eyes are going to close just trying to remember Dr. Veto and the Nukokian church and just try to like mimic how he stood and how he spoke and his calmness um, and she's going to say into Kinyumi's ear um, Spirit hear me show yourself and see me for who I am which I believe is the bridge between life and death. And if you wish to find peace, maybe you can find it through me. Just sort of a little pause there as Kimi listens. <laughs> you hear kind of a spirit come through and then disappear as soon as it came, as if something resisted your attempt to sort of reach in. Oh, that scared the shit out of me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear that? Okay. Orba's gonna like wipe her hands on her dress. Okay, I told you he was getting a little scary this time. Oh I'm never God. doing that again. I'm sorry, I tried. It's okay. Oh, it's so okay. scary. Don't worry about it. You okay? Uh, yeah, okay. okay. Let's just Let's go. Yeah. Uh, so, you guys go to rejoin Erlen. <laughs> <laughs> Beyond the next door is another open room. This one kind of more of a, almost like a hexagon, like it's sort of even sides all the way around. And despite its decrepit state and sort of not overwhelming size, it retains a bit of its majesty. It looks like it was a theater. It has a circular stage in the center. There's little pools of water that sparkle by the light of the torches hung on the walls. And though the seating is all but eroded to bits of marble and wood dispersed along the floor, you get the impression that to see someone perform or speak here would actually be a a quite beautiful thing. It has a very kind of cozy ambiance here in the middle. Another impression that you get is that the item currently occupying the stage was not there originally. There's a bunch of deep scratch marks and indentations along the floor that look like something very heavy was dragged into place. And on a platform in the very center is a boulder kind of a dull brown, swirling browns and blacks, almost like a banded agate, but not as vibrant or distinct. And the, the just you're not familiar with it as an item, but in the back of your head, the fact that your companions have been searching for a lodestone, kind of come, this sort of oddly out of place piece of stone here in the center sort of catches your eye. You think that maybe that might be the object of their fixation. Standing by the stone with his arms crossed, is Malik. He's watching, he's like standing looking at the stone there in the middle, and he's watching as a kobold who has a cage of rats in one of his hand. He has a little cage with a, like maybe a half dozen, seven, eight rats in it. He reaches in, and he pulls one of the little rats out, puts the cage okay. down. Okay. He holds the rat up to the lodestone. No. And he touches its kind of nose to the lodestone. What? And he holds it there. And the rat sort of sniffs at it and then begins to gnaw at the stone. Kobold kind of lets him do it for a moment. Uh, <laughs> little, little shavings of rock kind of coming out in its mouth. 
and it sort of eats up the little pieces of stone, pebbles. And he pulls it back. And Malik's kind of watching. <laughs> Kobold takes the rat. <laughs> <laughs> stone that looks like a ball sack? <laughs> the kobold takes the rat. And he brings up the cage. And he holds the rat that was just chewing on the stone. And all of the rats in the cage. Whoa. Yeah. They're like drawn to the rat that was just chewing on the stone. And as he moves it around the cage, they all like get jump over each other and like scamper across the cage to get as close as possible to this rat that's been gnawing at the stone. Oh. So they're all kind of following this lodestone lead rat that he's oh. holding in his hand. So he's demonstrating this for Malik, and Malik seems to be kind of like nodding along. And while this is happening, the kobold is escorting closer and closer, a little bit closer to the center. And as Malik is watching, it looks like he nods and starts to reach into his pocket and take out like a pouch of valuable gemstones. Like you see some sparkling, oh. some little rubies or something in his hand that he's sort of counting out. And you get a little bit closer. Officer Magmet, best you keep smiling. If the kobolds think there's conflict between us, they'll kill us. And he holds out a hand. <laughs> 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 what are you doing here? <laughs> Go fuck yourself. <laughs> what the fuck's up with those rats, dude? This is a curious question, you piece of shit. <laughs> because I was He looks to the kobold. <laughs> because I was hoping to ask you the same thing. Why do you insist on sticking your nose where it does not belong? Are you not tied up with your pointed relegation? It's because of my pointed relegation that I am here. I understand Mr. Vareed is up to some shit and that you are involved. So it is my hope to find out what is going on here, take what I know to the city council, clear my name, return to the Broken Crown, and make sure Vareed and yourself spend the rest of your lives in prison. <laughs> tempting. <laughs> <laughs> Very tempting. And uh, what leverage do you have, Officer Magomet? Because what I see is a man desperate in a place he does not know with a uh, supposed mission that he does not understand he knows not Vareed's motivations or what he's looking to accomplish. He's just being a good little boy of the broken crown. So why don't you tell me either what you're going to do about it or what I can pay you to fuck off? <laughs> <sighs> Unfortunately, money has neither purpose for either of us, yes? Tell me what you're doing. And what would that possibly do for you other than give you ammunition against me, sir? Perhaps we both go back to the city council and reveal to them together what this horrible Mr. Vareed is forcing you to do. And perchance, the city of Kodil gets a new head of vermin control and containment. Mm. Make a persuasion check with disadvantage. Oh. No. <laughs> Sounded like convincing to me. Yeah. Take the roll. roll and take oh. the lower. That's a tough beat. 14. 14. Oh, wait. Wait, the lower, lower one. Yeah, the lower. The lower is Oh, yeah. That was oh, the nice. Oh, sure. Well. It was a 19, <laughs> man. What the fuck? Uh, 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 17. 17. Ooh. 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 There we go. Persuasive. Very charming. Yeah. <laughs> I have ambitions, Officer Magomet. Oh, excuse me, Mr. Magomet. Yes? No, sir. Uh, I don't believe at this particular time it is the right move for me 
because you see right now, I can simply frown or push you and they will take you away and put you in a cell. And I believe that someone, after I've been put in a cell, will come to bail me out. But who will come bail you out, sir? I think no one. You would think wrong. It's interesting you think so little of me that I would come here completely by myself. <laughs> ah. Oh, invisible on it. <laughs> <laughs> We can't hear any of this. No, you guys are. Q Goonies music. I know. I really want to pop up and be like. I didn't tell you it was wrong, ropes about it. (laughs) What is it that you want from me? I would like you to butt out. (laughs) I don't know what to do. Okay, look. It seems to me that. Perhaps we could find ourselves in a mutually beneficial situation. I'll tell you a little bit about what we're thinking. You tell me if that sounds good to you. And then we go our separate ways. I don't come back with you. We sit on it for a while and see what happens. (laughs) All right, then. You see... (laughs) Have you ever heard of the, and he racks his brain for a moment, the, um, I have to rack my brain. (laughs) There we go. Glickett's Quarter. You've heard the name before. It's a section of Cateel. There's a number of neighborhoods Mm. in Cateel. It's one of those. Glickett's Quarter is a, an old elven population, very entrenched in the city. And the Glickett's Quarter, they always tend to vote against progress. Votes come up at the council, and they turn their votes in, and nothing ever gets done. They like the old ways. But see, me and Varee, we like the new ways. Tax reform, stronger punishments for violent offenders, and most importantly, no term limits on council members. (laughs) We need to make sure that these old elves of Glickett's Quarter don't have a say in the next election. So, we're going to get these little rats into Glickett's quarter and get them out of their homes by declaring a quarantine, state of emergency, which Vareed has the authority to do as head of the BCC. And you see, in Katil, if you don't have a permanent residence at the time of an election, you're not allowed to vote. So conveniently, we're going to evict a few of these old elves just in time for the election, and then we're going to get our progress. Are you and Mr. Vareed powerful enough to help me return to the soldiers of the Broken Crown and perchance have a few mistakes in my record? my brother's record, Cleet. I believe that Vareed has the power certainly to revoke his request for pointed relegation, as it was he who put it in to begin with. All right. I came here to look at a particular rat that I was told would... uh, do a very good job drawing all of the rats in the city. Not these small, sad, pathetic little creatures, (laughs) but a large one. I believe they have it waiting for me in the next room over. Would you care to join me? Why not? (laughs) He turns to the kobold. (laughs) Business partners, Mr. Magomet. Officer Magnet. Partners. <laughs> Come on. So what's to walk? <laughs> Following him? Rat. Yes, right. Start to move. You get to the far end. <laughs> door opens up. And it's very dim inside this room. You just open the door for a brief moment. 
and you can peer into the inside where there's another sort of cage. And it's a little bit further away, so it's hard to get a gauge on size, but as soon as you're stepping closer to it, the cage looks like it's getting bigger and Shit. bigger. And you see like a, <laughs> like clamping against the bars with its front teeth, this enormous, oh, no. it at least comes up to your waist like that oh. big of a rat. Oh. And you could, there's a couple of kobolds like on the edge of the cage that look like they have chunks of the lodestone and they're feeding it to the rat. And, it, oh. and it's eating more and more of it. And as, when this door opens up, those rats that were in the cage in the other room, you can hear them like clamoring as to get as close as they can to this big rat that's sort of pulling all of the energy in the direction of this rat. <laughs> steps inside, <laughs> and the kobold kind of waits to see if you come inside. Oh. Step in, pulls the door wide. We swing back over. Oh my god! <sighs> so we, could we party. see that happening? No. Absolutely not. Because this As is room beyond the rat yeah. fuck of Kira. <laughs> <laughs> I feel a kobold. Like pull. <laughs> <laughs> As you pulled the kobold body into that side room, give me an investigation check with this man. Oh yeah, I wanted to have this guy down too. You can give me an investigation Ooh, too if you help him pull him in. Yeah, I wanted to have help him. Uh, investigation? Uh, 13. 13. Oh, I think I have. Oh, yes, I do. 17. 17. Mm -hmm. As you guys had pulled that kobold into the room, you give a look, quick look around to make sure there's no kobolds in here or anything suspicious. And once again, line, line, line. There's another indication. Oh, oh my God. A symbol um, here. That is. means. Get, 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 um, all by and, and keep, keep forgot You want us to all go through the passage? There's a hidden passage. Right? Yes, that's. Yes. Okay, yeah, I'm going to go. And I'll, I'll go Sisa back. See Sapphira's head peek out. <laughs> oh, what's her name? Yeah, <laughs> get good old what's her name. Oh, oh, Sapphira, Sapphira. All oh, right, everyone okay? Well, mm, yeah, what's up? Okay, what's up well, with you? We can unpack that later. There's another hidden passageway. I think we should go through it. She's good. getting them. Wax on, mm -hmm. wax off. As you, as you're <laughs> I was looking for Feeling against the wall, you look right where the symbol is, and it looks like there's a stone that if you push, it kind of. I'm gonna do that. Pushes through. Yep, and it. Oh, brilliant. Okay. You can peek through and see. You would have to crawl through this. It's even smaller. I'm than gonna the start. One. Sorry, I'm, I'm right there. I'm sorry. Secret passage. I'm gonna just crawl. Yeah, through. I'm gonna start crawling behind him. And as you start to move through, Kiimi is the last one in the back, and you feel there's nothing there but just a press on your shoulder, as if something kind of reached out to stop you. No. There is danger in there. Okay, well, frankly, sounds like there's a whole lot of danger waiting for me the second I get out of the Ebb Woods. There like, is another way to the cemetery. But you just said follow my friends for like a little bit longer. I didn't know your friends were headed into danger. Can we just get through the tunnel and like reevaluate? <laughs> it's time to say goodbye, Kimi. Okay, fine. Fine. I'm gonna just like, like tug on who's right in front of me. Orba Orba was I'm just gonna right tug on Orba's ankle, like. Yeah, Orba like tries to turn <laughs> oh, no. really tight on the way here. <laughs> I have to go. Like, take a different entrance into this room. Go. Orba like looks at <laughs> where we're at. <laughs> I gotta finish this thing I started. This is where I leave you. Say bye to everyone for me, and oh. and tell Graven that um, I hope he's okay when he wakes up. We can't come meet you where you where you're going. Maybe I'll come find you guys after um, I get rid of the voice once and for all. <laughs> Wish me luck. She's gonna like try to. She's like crawling or something, right? You're on. You're on all fours. She's gonna like <laughs> reach her arm back with her palm up in the air and just try to reach for as close as she can get. <laughs> I like grab onto Orba's hand and like squeeze a little bit. Be like, thank you so much for your help. Please be safe. You guys too. She'll grab it really hard. Okay, I'm gonna like back up out of the tunnel now. Yeah, okay. All right. <laughs> Good luck. Thank you. I'm gonna Go. just switch your way back. Oh, shit. You hear the sounds of shuffling get a little quieter behind you, and then just feet moving, you know, back along the balcony there. She disappears. 
three of you move quickly through. And Erlen's the first one through. It was the first one in yeah. there. Yeah, so you get your arms kind of get out to the other side and you get, you're emerging in that same room, that sort of large, sort of octagon room, immediately large sort of swirling stone in the center, sort of black and brown. Where you've come out, again, is not on the bottom floor. You're in one of those like, seated areas, like there's a number of these little pods around oh. for, again, distinguished guests would be able to sit up here in this very so exclusive, the yes, the booths. Are they, yes. So are they exclusive booths or can we get to all the They're other exclusive, ones? Oh, yeah, so there's no. a few, there's like eight around the room I'm and blue. you're in one of them, but you can crawl out into it and see into this room. And is it similar where there's a, um, Stone like banister. Yeah, there is a banister. Sort of. Yep. So and do we can... see Ravi exiting? How's it time? You out? watch as Ravi disappears into yet again the next room over. And as he's <laughs> moving into the other room, you hear some squeaking noises, and you look, and at the foot of the stone is a cage full of rats that's like. <laughs> as people are coming out, why? 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 Okay. He just went through to the next room. I'm just gonna was get to the edge of the hole and just with her head poke out, she'll be like, What's up? You all right? Okay, so Kami turned around and left. What? What, what do you um, mean? Her curse took her elsewhere. She what? says, Best of luck. It, just, she just started moving on her own. Yeah, she, just start, she, she went in the tunnel and then she, she turned around. So she's off doing her own thing now, uh, but she wishes her best. Okay. Oh, no, no, no time right now. Well, Okay. That's a right shame. We could have used her, but I hope she's all right. I suppose. Fuck's sake! We've got to keep following Ravi. We're gonna, gonna fucking lose him. I'm, I'm gonna look thing. around this room and see if I can't see any of those. I'm looking for the symbols now. The hidden passageway. Okay, so. from up here in the booth, it's a little. It's hard to see. I it's mean, like torch in the here. booth and also. Yeah, from, from, the from the booth, there is like a little ladder going down to the to the floor level. So it okay. looks like that's how you get up into these booths normally. Okay. So you can see that that there is a way to get down. Okay. You don't see any symbols. So. Uh, oh, by the way, remind, remind us on on lodestones. Remind us on the lodestones. That's... <gasps> what? That's it. What do you mean? That's, that's, it. that's, that's it. it? That's it? That's, that's the stone? That's it. Okay. I don't have... Well, Jimmy, where's the thing? picture, but it just... Oh, where's I have the thing? Where's the picture? That's it. That's the thing. That's it. That's the thing. That's it. Just looks like kind of a... And as you're searching through for that picture, you also go past like the compass? compass, and it is like... Like wiggling, like it's forcefully okay, pointing in the okay. direction of the. Where's the, uh, where's the bangy stone? Thing? Fuck. 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 Great, okay. Hold on. Hold on. Wait. Wait a second. Get. You, stop it. What? Great. So. What? The, I don't think that the mount was really a necessary thing. Okay. Can so we the just get off? Are the lodestones magical or? or Magnetic no, or... it's, it's mechanical. He said oh, it needed okay, to be hit okay. by metal. No, and Graven was like, metal. oh, can't I just use my mace? And he said, no, it should probably be all metal. But that guy's kind of a little yeah. silly. So he probably... What's metal? It... What's metal? Do we, what have... do we have this metal? Do we have anything? Do you have anything metal? I have an unchaku. Wait, well, that, no. That, 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 do, you that's have metal? A, do you have um uh your... uh Quarterstaff? Yeah. In that's my, not metal. On my horse, on my saddlebags. What did you do uh, with your horse? No, I what, have it. I have it. I have his thing. Do you have my quarterstaff? On you? But it's no, on, it's the on the horse. horse. No, on your person. Something that is in this room. No, no, no. no, no. But I, I but, thought the nunchaku were metal. What's wrong with that? Wood, aren't they? They're wood. They have metal tips on the ends of them, but they're mostly wood. Going to look at the size of the stone. What's metal in this room? Looking around at anything the cobalt Wait, have. Wait, the cobalt have metal spears, don't they? Or are they metal? <sighs> the tips of the spears sometimes have metal on them. Um, they use kind of they scavenge for whatever reason. Some cages, of them are the cages spears. are metal with all the rats. You want the rat cage is metal. You we, want to open. <laughs> One can we see the rat? We don't oh, actually. The, no, no, can't not see the big, big rat, the but there's a cage. there's a medium sized cage of a bunch how, of. How many cobalt? Right now, none. Oh, right none. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So we saw and we saw Ravi exit. Walk with, yeah, like there was a cobalt right behind him as he walked into another room. So you're just going to pick up that whole cage of rats and you're just going to smack it against this wall? Did you have a better idea? No, I don't. That's the problem. I don't have a better idea. What happens when we smash the dismal? It activates. It activates. Yeah, it just needs a bonk. Does that make it a sound? Like yeah, the loads, the, it's gonna the make a sound. Metal against the rock, are you asking if the metal against the stone is gonna make a sound, Alan? All right, should we rescue? Does Ravi need rescuing? Does he know what he's he doing? No yes, no, no, no. Yeah, no, no, no. Like, I think we should assume that he needs rescuing. Like when he stepped in there, he had a look on his face that said, I've got no idea what the fuck's going on. So I think that judging by that expression, that means, please, for the love of God, help me. Sounds like we need a distraction. No, we're not there yet. <laughs> No, why has he got that look on his face? 
Whenever we distract, Erlen's never gonna put his hands on the bed. Erlen, never gonna put his hands on the bed. Instrumental. As you get down. I no, 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 no. So the door closes. Bobo <laughs> locks it behind. You step into this room, the enormous cage with this rat gnawing at the metal bars. Oh no. I'm going to pay the kobolds for this very, very expensive rat that we have requested. Oh my god. <laughs> and then I'm going to take it back to Katil with me. Do you have a problem with that? Like on a leash or something? <laughs> <laughs> They are going to take it out of the ruins for me, and I have a wagon waiting at the edge of the Ebwoods that we are going to pack it in. I have no issue with that. Good. Now, he takes that little pouch out again. I'm going to pay them, and we'll be on our way. He holds up the little pouch of kind of rubies to the kobold who, oh, that's all. You can immediately see, like, the sparkling in their eyes. Uh, let's count it out, shall we? He goes over. There's, like, a little shelf along the wall, and he starts to count out some of these rubies. And th- he's standing kind of right next to another door out of the room. So there's a door into this room and then another kind of door mm-hmm. off to the side. And as he's counting out the rubies, he kicks the door open, tosses the rubies through the door. So the kobold <laughs> follows the rubies, and he steps through the door. <laughs> And closes it. Oh my god. And you're in the room with this rat in the cage. And it gets its teeth up to the top of one of the bars. And it pulls one of the bars loose. And it starts to gnaw on another one. Pulls another oh bar loose. God. And Robbie sort of reaches for his two swords. And that's where we're going to end tonight's episode. Oh <laughs> my God! What? As we decide. What? We will never On know. On a leash? Never, we won't <laughs> know now. Whether Robbie makes it out of the rat room, and if he does, whether he follows Malik back to Katil. Clear his name. What? what goes on with that election? I mean, geez. <laughs> what the? Yeah, that's some fuck? gerrymandering garbage. What redlining? <laughs> <is>? <laughs> yeah, political. Wow. wow. Oh. What? No term limits. You, boy? Why do you need this so bad? Don't worry about it. <laughs> you can read all about it when oh, we sure. post yes. oh. yeah. the backstory information for both Kimi. And Robbie. Oh wow. my, oh my God. God. So wow. in the next room, over, unable to access him, but, fi- but in the lodestone room <laughs> are Orba, Safira, and Erlen. In the next room, over, Ravi, and backtracking to find the cemetery, and then oh my God. back to Dillison. Patricide. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, jeez. Oh, no. Ow. Yeah, so oh, I decided my mom and dad were wrong. So and I matricide. Them. We'll <laughs> see. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Maybe yeah, have just we'll the dad. Yeah. <laughs> you kill one and you're like, that uh, seemed like that, a knock. That was a 50 50. I would like to extend an extremely warm oh. thank you to our guests, Eric and Billy. You guys were fantastic. What a blast to have a little bit of an extended awesome. arc here with our characters. Oh, we will miss you. Yeah, it's going to feel oh, very weird. It feels um, so sad. And uh, hopefully will not be the last. Hopefully be back see. soon. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, and maybe when Robbie comes back, he will be chewed full of rattles. No, 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 no. no, no he's no, gonna no, be a no, giant no. rat. Come on. Oh. Robbie comes back. He's gonna be like Exactly. He rides the rat around. <laughs> Malik's like on his way back, and he's like. <laughs> <laughs> He's my friend now. <laughs> you, you thought you could turn the rat on me? <laughs> I am king of rats. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, okay. Thank you all so, 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 so much for joining us. Um, yes? Yes, all right. Let's hit him up real quick. Oh Jeremiah goodness. gifted a sub. Scorp- Scorpina, I always do this one. I'm wrong. Scorpina <laughs> Gillespie. That's oh, not it, but Giuseppe? I'm going to say it is. Third month. Thank you so very much. Um, I'm going to keep scrolling because, again, this thing sucks. Uh, Keep a Trade did five gifted subs. Thank you so much. Banished Raven did uh, three subs. Banished Raven, you're just the best. Jeremiah did 100 bits. Uh, Still scrolling. Jeremiah did one sub. Uh, Scholar Grimer, subscribe. Thank you. Welcome back, friend. It's been a while. Yeah. And then. I'm 
so sorry, guys. Uh, Mr. Squiggles did 100 bits. Keep oh. it right. He gave a sub away. Um, 200 bits by GF Powers. And I believe I got everybody. I'm so sorry if I missed you, but thank you so, thank you guys so <laughs> thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you so much. <sighs> we will be back next week. No. We'll have the regular cast back. Oh, you know, that'll be weird. Yeah. Um, very weird. And we will be picking it up with chapter 13. You guys didn't use your inspiration. <laughs> yeah. No. I, there was one like stealth roll or something that I thought mm. you were going to use your, your well, reroll. Uh, you didn't you roll badly. Pretty, yeah, you rolled pretty system. goodly yeah, the whole yeah, episode. Yeah, <laughs> it was bad. For like as long as we have the crew. Yes, I just mean yeah. for our guests who yeah, were, yes, they could have used it. They're going to come back in 100 episodes and they're still going to have their yeah, experience. Yeah. Never ready to use it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> roll well. <laughs> yes. Um, once again, from all of us here at Tabletop Notch, thank you guys Oh, and JC so did a 200 bits. Thank you so thank very you. much. We hope yeah. you enjoyed this little mini arc as we uh, worked our way back. Welcome back to the table. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I was nervous. Yeah. I was like, did I forget how to play? Yes. Yeah. No, you got into it pretty quickly. Yeah, when no, you, you remember to how to abandon us. And jump into a <laughs> yeah. giant pit of the rats. <laughs> dun, 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 yeah, dun, dun, so with Erlen leading the way. Rats are in a cage. <laughs> That's yeah, perfect. It's like, yeah, it's a pretty big cage full of rats. You guys are just going to pick it up and bang the stuff. Those rats are going to be like, what the heck? These people are awful. All right, everybody. Have a wonderful night. We'll see you next week oh, on the clock Eastern. You. See you guys. Good night. Crazy.